All right, here we go. Boosie, welcome back to Vlad TV, filming at Boosie Estates right now. First interview of 2024. And I just got bit by your dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm suing for 500,000, but I'm gonna settle out of court for a free interview. <laughs> and from what I understand, I'm like the third person that got bit this week by your dog. Yeah, in the last 48 hours. Oh, last two days. I hey, gotta get look. him, I gotta, I think I gotta. And everybody had on all black. It's an all black thing. Okay. I think it is, bro. Like, man, he just, he overprotective, bro. I mean. Yeah. Hey, man, it happens. I have a crazy Rottweiler at home, so I'm not really tripping. But, you know, it potentially could be a liability. You got someone that comes over here broke, he might, he might try to sue, do something stupid. You know what I mean? I saw you kind of scolding the dog outside. He's like peeing on himself. Yeah, he know I'm going to whoop his ass, so he, <laughs> he go to running and... <laughs> It's all good, man. It's all good. Like I said, I got, I got a crazy dog myself. It's just a small little, little cut on my finger. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. All right, so let's get into it. Top of the news. Big Meech is getting out early. He just got 32 months taken off his sentence. He's getting out in 2025. Yeah. You excited? Yeah, I, I'm, you know, I, I'm kind of excited because, you know, uh... I mean, I was I was doing my thing when me left the streets, but you know, I never got to meet him. You oh, you know? never met him? Nah, man. I seen him come through. I mean, I just seen <laughs> seen the cars and shit coming through, you know. Yeah. But uh, then you know, I rock with his son, so man, you know. Little Meach. You know, I won't meet him. You know, get a flick with him, put him in the house. You know. Yeah. Legends, you know, I, I respect dudes who who stays silent, I ain't tell on nobody. There's only a few of them left, so I, you know, I, I value them dudes, bro. I, I look at them dudes in a whole nother light, especially in these times. You know, uh, I got nothing but, nothing but respect for me, you know. Uh, I always said he had a good ass heart, man, so God don't forget about those, bro. Those who give to others when they when they in need, bro, and people who stand up for themselves and be solid, bro, like them dudes really need to be saluted, you know. And, and uh, I can't wait to meet them and you know take a picture with them and you know hopefully I can hear some stories, or, you know. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm happy for him, man. I'm happy for Lil Meech too, man. Because, yeah. Yeah, I'm happy for him. Yeah, I mean, I got to hang out with BMF and actually at Big Meech's house. This was maybe 2004, I think. And, uh, you know, Meech, me and him had just, just a brief conversation. He was just really quiet and just sort of scoping out everyone because, like, BMF was very inviting. Like, if you partied with them, they, they really, like, come on through. Here's a bottle of Cristal. Here's all the weed you can smoke. Yeah. Here's all the Magic City girls in the house. Remember they rented out the whole penthouse in some hotel and it was just filled with Magic City girls? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. I remember Slow Motion was the biggest song during that time. Okay. They just kept playing it. And the girls <laughs> just, Rest ah! in peace, soldier. <laughs> right. Exactly. No, yeah. man, it was, a, it was a movie. It was a movie. But it was also, when I was there, it was just obvious what was about to happen. Yeah. It was like, okay, I'm smart enough to know that nobody's making music money here, right? Yeah. They had one artist, Blue Da Vinci, that was not, you know, popping at the time. Yeah. Jeezy wasn't really around when I was there. Okay. Um, and, but they had billboards, they had 30 Lamborghinis, and they, they had ice sculptures that said BMF. It, it was like, okay, like this is going to end really badly. So I'm just going to party tonight. And I'm going to quietly move back yeah. and, and, and stay out the way because... When this goes down, I don't want to be anywhere near it. And, and sure enough, that, that's what happened. It was sad because they were all like really good guys. <clears throat> you know, but uh, Meech is going to get out and it's going to be a movie. Right. It's going to be a movie. Yeah. I, I can't I wait. Won't see the, I, won't, I, won't, I won't see who's going to shoot the movie for the life story. Yeah. Well, I mean, you already have it. I mean, you know, the BMF series. Yeah. 
Yeah. So you already have that. Yeah. I mean, a series is, goes into much more detail than a movie ever could. Because they're about to, season three, I think by the time this comes out, season three will be out. Yeah. Hey, you watch the BMF series? Nah, I watched the first little bit of it. I just, I don't have time to watch stuff. Mm. You got to catch up. Solid series. Yeah. Little Meech did his thing on it. Yeah. Well, I actually interviewed Big Meech's lawyer, Drew Finling. Yeah. Who is your lawyer as well. Yeah. I didn't realize until afterwards there was actually Big Meech's lawyer. I'm kicking myself right now. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You, didn't, you just realized? I just, I realized it afterwards. After I announced it, I was like, did you ask about Big Meech? And I'm like, ah. Yeah. I forgot. It wasn't in my research, unfortunately. But uh, Drew Finling is a beast out here. Yeah. My God. What, what, what case did he represent you for? Uh, 2016, uh, I was pulled over. I had a gun in a car, me and my security, and like 28 grams of weed. Okay. And like 30 bands on me. And what ultimately happened? Uh, gun charge throughout, mm. uh, six months probation. Mm. I went down to the courthouse the same day and paid for my probation. I was pro off probation the same day. Yeah. I mean, he calls himself the best criminal uh, attorney in the country. Right, and, right, uh, right. Because, you know, like, you know, he, he a shark, man. He a shark, man. Uh, yeah. And it's basically, you know, it's, man, it's just certain different states or different states, man. Like, you know, you got to throw it out. It's, and my security, my security claiming to the gun, man. You know, yeah. I, I claim to the marijuana, you know, but. They just be trying to stick it to you. And Drew, 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 Drew is one. He don't. He got a passion for what the criminal system are doing to the rappers. Mm. That's one of his passions. He don't. He don't like that at all, bro. You know because he see that we good people. You know he don't. He don't look at us in a light like like somebody else would. And uh, he's one of the best at it, man. I mean. He's one of the best at it. How much does it cost to retain Drew? Depends on the charge. What's the minimum? A federal charge is 300. Like 300,000. Yeah, federal <laughs> charge. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think that's what he charged Lou. Oh, uh, why well, I Lucci? Yeah, 300. Okay, I tried to ask him. He kind of danced around the question. I think like 300. Yeah. Okay, that's where it starts. And that's, yeah. <laughs> well, but if, you're, if your life is on the line, yeah, That's it's the worth best 300000 you'll spend in your whole life. Yeah, man, yeah. I mean, a state charge won't be that, but yeah. federal, you got you to gotta pay it. Well, in your case, it was a state charge. Yeah. So how much did that cost? Uh, I think like a dollar. 100000 Yeah. But look what happened. You right. could have gone to jail. Right. There you have it. You get what you pay for. Right. Right. And I mean, the reason I brought him in was because of the YFN Lucci case. So Lucci, I think, was facing like 30 years or something at one point because there was, you know, someone died. Uh, there was a RICO that they try to throw yeah. into the whole situation. There was a gang situation they try to throw in. And ultimately, he kind of broke it all down. Lucci pleaded to a gang associate or something. Right. Where it's like he's not actually in a gang, but he may know some gang members type, right. type thing, which right. is a reduced charge. Right. I think the Rico got thrown out. Right. And it was like 10 years, but with time served. You only do 40 months on it. Right. You're already 36 so, months. Exactly. He basically is getting out. Once, once he got, you know, once he pled out, it was three and a half months left. Yeah. So from this point, I think it's like three months left. Right. That's, that's a hell of a deal right hell there. Hell yeah, because, and that lets you know it wasn't that strong. Yeah. Because she ain't giving a lot of other people deals, you know, so that lets you know it wasn't that strong. And Lou called me the night before the deal. Mm. He said, Boosie, this is what they got on the table for me. I said, what you waiting on? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you talking to me for? He said, I just wanted to call you, man. You know, you know, you my, I, I say, man, what are you waiting for? Like, what are you, I say, run with it, man. I'll see you this summer. 
Right. He like, man, that, he say, I just want, you know, I like, man, bro, you know, get back to them kids, man, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. Once he played, they, he basically had to shave his head. They took him straight, you know, to the yeah. penitentiary to just start as quickly as possible. So there's no more delays. Yeah. And yeah, a quick little three months. I mean, because yeah. it, was, it was messed up. He got stabbed in prison. I mean, in jail. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was it was a dangerous situation for him. He didn't know what was, you know, in store for him. So the fact that he can get out in three more months. Sweet. I know he ain't want to cut that hair. I know I didn't. So you have to cut your hair for the pen? Yeah. When you go to DOC, you got to cut your hair. Ball. They had huh. to go get the warden for me. What do you mean? They had to go get the warden for me to cut my hair. Because you didn't want to cut your hair? Hell no, I went crazy. <laughs> they put me in a warden office and made me cut my hair. So put they made me you in cut the it chair. Anyways. Okay. I, yeah, I ended up having to cut it. Boosie fade gone. Yeah, man. <laughs> the ball boos- hit it. The Boosie Baldy. <laughs> <laughs> I was pissed. I already got this time, you know, for these marijuana charges. Now I got to go ball. Like, I was pissed that day, man. So were you the one that referred Feinling to uh to Lucci? Yeah. Okay. That's that's real talk. This ain't no he called me like, man, what's up with Drew? You know, cause he got a hell of a lawyer. Banks, man, he the the other guy he got, he had a dream team, bro. Like huh. that black guy is a bro, I went to I went to every day I went to uh what three days in a row I went to jury selection. Oh, for Lucci? Yeah, for Lucci. Yeah. Uh, you know, that was in jury selection. Oh, yeah, no. He, he told me. Drew said, like, they were in the trial. This was not like a pre-trial plea. This yeah. was like, we're in the middle of the trial. And he wouldn't tell me what happened, but if something happened that made the case kind of stumble. And they, I and mean, they I was started... in there, bro. This, this was the worst part, bro. This, I said I wasn't going back, <laughs> Drew. <laughs> I walked in there, me and three of my guys, and sit down. They got this white guy who they asking about. He said, he said, uh, I don't think I can be a part of this case. Look at those guys who just walked in. They're scolding me right now. Oh. My heart dropped, bro. Like you might mess up Lucci's case. My heart uh, un- dropped. Unintentionally, of course. Yes, bro. I'm like, did he just pinpoint me out? That's crazy. Cause I'm looking nice, man. I, bro, he's like, <laughs> they're they're watching me right now. And look the whole back there. Boy, Drew went off. Drew went off. This man doesn't need it. He Drew Drew went off. <laughs> he's bro, Drew went off. <laughs> Did he just say that? Like he this man, bro, this man, then he asked him about, he was like, do you understand that this is not the young thug case? He said, I don't care. They're the same people. Oh. He say, have you ever heard of Lucci? No, but I've heard of uh, the YSL thing. And all of these people is the same people. Oh. I was like, man, this juror, right? Bro, I, I was like, I'm not coming back, bro, because I didn't want to bring yeah. no harm to the case and people looking at us in the back like, I was just trying to give my boy some support, bro, but I wasn't going to go back after that, man. That, did they throw that juror out or no? Yeah, he got, they threw, they threw him yeah. out. They threw him out. But still, you know, the words are echoing with the other yeah. jurors. So, yeah, then the other good. lawyer was like, then he said that, yeah, because nobody wants to be a part of this jury. We was talking about that in the back. Oh. So he contaminating <laughs> yeah. the whole, everybody back there. All right. I was like, man, this bro, I, 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 I was like, man, I'm not coming back, man, because I don't want to bring no harm to this case my, by me just looking fly, I mean. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I talked to Drew about this. Lucci refused to cooperate against Young Thug. Right. And it was just, I talked to him about that. He just was like, you know, if my client wants to not cooperate, we're not gonna cooperate, that's it. I didn't try to talk him into whatever. He don't want to cooperate, we're done. I, I made it very clear to the prosecution that my client is not looking for any type of cooperation deal he's not snitching he's not doing anything of that sort there's there's 
the only deal that you have seen is the deal that was publicly filed that he said no to and how we ultimately resolve the case, um, which under Georgia parole guidelines makes him potentially eligible in now less than three months. Um, and other than that, that's that. Um, we've been very clear publicly, which was very important to Ray, um, that everybody be well aware of the fact that he's not testifying in any case. Um, and I think I've said before, you know, he wouldn't even testify in a traffic ticket. So he's not going to testify in another courtroom. He wants to be as far from courtrooms as possible. He sat through over two weeks of jury selection. I know it's enough to burn out most people. Um, and, and he's one of them. And look, you will not cooperate if you still got a hell of a deal. Remember a I said this in the interview? Yeah. Most of the time when you don't talk, you walk. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, man. And the, the fact that he was stabbed by someone affiliated with YSL and still would not cooperate against YSL, because most people would look that as a reason. Well, I wasn't going to cooperate, but then they stabbed me. So, you know, I did what I had to do. You know how many people I, I interviewed from the mafia who have a reason kind of like that? I was going to cooperate, but then I heard a tape of John Gotti talking about me, so I cooperated against 20 people. Nah, they just rats. They just, they just, they just, you, know, you just make an excuse. You knew you was going to rat. You just had to find the excuse. Yeah. If that wasn't the excuse, they'll use a bitch. <laughs> yeah. He fucked my wife. He yeah. fucked my cousin. He touched my underage daughter. That's what they use, bitches. Yeah. This, this, I know the streets like the back of my hand. Right. They use bitches to betray, but to betray others. It's been going on since the early Roman days. Yeah. That's what they do. If it ain't a nigga, they gonna use a bitch. Mm-hmm. Try to co coincide that. With, with the Bible and shit. You're not supposed to touch a man's wife, so I'm gonna turn a fucking snitch. They've been doing it from the mafia on fucking down. Yeah. That's what they've been, they've yeah. been doing. Now, I've interviewed these guys, so so I'm fully familiar, man. But listen, I, I can't wait. I already talked to Lucci's uh, manager. I'm like, yo, I want that first interview. You know, I fuck with Lucci. Me yeah. and him have had multiple interviews. You know, I've always been cool with that label from Rich Homie Quan to everyone else, man. Right. Like. I think I did Quan's first interview, actually. Yeah, you, you know talked to Fly? Uh, yeah, uh, to, to Trinidad James. I'm the one that helped okay. break that music video I put on my YouTube channel and it blew up. So yeah. I, I've been, you know, YSL, I don't know. I don't know anyone from YSL. But YFN and, and that whole label, yeah. I, I rock with them, man. So I was really happy when I heard that news. Yeah, Fly, Fly, Fly yeah. was there every step of the way. Man. Yeah, yeah, I love Fly. Every man. time I walked in that courtroom. Solid. Every time I walked in a prayer, we had prayer for Lucci, every mm -hmm. fly there, bro. And I, yeah. you know, and solid dude. Man. I, I love respect fly. that, bro. I love fly, you know, man. I, I Shout out to fly. It. I respect that. Well, the YSL Rico case is still going on, though. And that is a mess. That is a mess. They, they hacked the, the TV screens at one point. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> they were like, Mistrial, free thug. <laughs> Some guy with like an accent, sound like he was from Europe or something. Um, you know, Fonnie Willis, they're saying that she had a relationship with the dude that got killed. Uh, you know, now they have a 911 call. Uh, and, you know, Young Thugs, I guess they're trying to use the lyrics. And Young Thugs' attorney actually played a whole bunch of songs where a bunch of artists were using C's instead of B's and everything else like that. Yeah. I mean, how do you feel about lyrics being used in that case? Because uh, you've had that happen to you. Yeah. In your murder case. I think they should have learned from me with that. With that, They're like, working. Like, <laughs> man, they play, in my case, they played two days of straight music. Yeah, I remember. You told me. And uh, I just feel like I feel like it shouldn't be done because, you know, it's a freedom of speech, you know. But we got to realize, too, that that's a part of the game now. You know, it's just like if they start giving you tickets for running yellow lights, everybody start getting running yellow lights. Yeah. It's accepted as part of the game now, you know. And I, I don't like it, but, I mean, it's a tool. It's a tool they use, and, you know, 
it came out of our mouth. You know, I, I was pissed in court because they were saying all the wrong shit. Like they was, you know, they don't even know the slangs like we know the slangs, you know. They just know the names. They just know the names. I said, I said, uh, and it affects the jurors mm -hmm. because uh, my prosecutor was, I said this clear. I said, Marlo Mike up in the back seat begging for a body. Mm. And I saw the jurors' face. They was like, And it seemed like it affected it more than the pins on the towers and all that. And I was looking like, damn. You know, and it, it affects the, the jurors listen to what come out your mouth. I saw their expressions. They were looking like, what did he say? Like, then she said it again. Mm, 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 mm. They gonna say it like five times. Mm, 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 mm. And I was looking at the jurors, and it was. It seemed like they was, they was, they was looking at it. They was, you know. But I don't think it's fair to us as an artist. Like you know, uh, I don't think it's fair to us as an artist at all, man. I mean, Marlo Mike was uh, sentenced to life without without parole, right? Yeah. Did they talk about the tattoo? Yeah. In court? So apparently Mike has a tattoo that says, yo, Boosie, who next? Yeah. And they used that in the courtroom? Yeah. Uh -huh. You think that was a, a big part of him getting convicted or? Um, nah, nah, nah. I, I, Lo, he got convicted on uh, his statements. You know, I, I feel like he got convicted on his statements telling about the crime or whatever. Oh, he made statements? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he made statements on probably multiple, multiple stuff. And yeah. I, I, think, I think his statements was too pinpoint on, you know, believable to the jury, you know? I mean, every case that I'm familiar with where people have gotten heinous sentences have always been because of what the person have said themselves. Right. Or right. have said on the phone, have texted, had a recorded conversation, or like you said, made statements. It, it's, it's very hard to convict somebody off hearsay and everything else. It does happen. Right, right. You know, right, Big right. Meech, that's how he got hemmed up. But I'm saying that most times, like, you know, like my man Taxstone, they, they they found like his discord and they they found statements that he made about the case. Right, right, and that's, right. That's right. you know I remember when I talked to his lawyer. His lawyer told me he talked to a juror and they said that's that's why we found him guilty. You know the Troy Ave thing. Right. We, we weren't really buying that. Right, obviously, right, right. It's Troy always... Ave had a reason to to say whatever, but when it's someone's own words, it's yeah. very hard to get over that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And with Lowe, I don't think he had a witness on none of his none of his cases against. Him. So it was just him. Yeah. Do you guys still talk? Nah. Nah? Yeah. Sad situation, man. Yeah, sad, bro. You know, I think about it all the time, you know what I mean? Uh, how old was he when he got uh, convicted? I think he was like eight, 19, 18, Damn. 19. He was a teenager. Yeah. Yeah, man, that that life ain't worth it. Yeah, yeah, because it's, it. it's just, man, it's just, it's a sad situation, you know, because, you know, he on a murder charge for, you know, killing my best friend too, you know. Uh, Bleak? Yeah. Oh. Oh, that's why you don't talk to him. Yeah. I'm sorry for your loss, man. We don't really talk about open cases in detail, but this case is done at this point. The old block six got found guilty of killing FBG Duck. Yeah. Yeah. I knew Duck in the sense that we did two interviews. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in both interviews, I told him he needs to move out of Chicago. And he argued with me in both interviews, only to have the worst possible situation happen to him. <clears throat> but, you know, but you said that you already knew what was about to happen to him because of that song, Dead Bitches. Yeah, I had told my boy we was going to Lennox, and he was, uh, he was playing it for me. Like, dude be snapping, and he, 
he liked that, you know, my boy, he a big chubby nigga, you know, he, <laughs> anybody kind of big, he like him, you know, he, so he was like, man, just listen, he, I was like, bro, that's Chirac right now, that's too many people, he, t I mean, I remember, bro, and, you know, probably five, six months later, he, he was gone. Well, all and I like that song. If you gon' slide, motherfucker, then slide. slide then. Oh, I don't yeah. fuck with rapper. No, no, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like, I yeah, like that. Yeah, that was his first hit song. I like that motherfucker. Yeah, no, I like man, that motherfucker. Duck was raw, man. I, I, I like I that really like Duck. I, I, I really like Duck. Like, I liked it, that song. Bro. Nah, he, he was dope. But you look, the six people that got convicted, C Murder, different C Murder than you know, of course. 32, Kenny Mack, 30, Los, 32, C Thang, 24, Muwap, 24, TZ, 34. You gotta think they've been locked up for three years. So some of these dudes were like locked up at 21. Right. And they're all facing mandatory life sentences. Why do you think, from your point of view, that six people would get together to kill someone in broad daylight on the most expensive block in Chicago, knowing there was almost zero chance of getting away with it. I mean, I don't know if they did that. I just because the jury say they did that, I, that don't mean I'm gonna say they did that. Okay, they but, if they, if, but if they did, I mean, if they if did, it, why, why do dudes, why would you throw your life away you don't be thinking you're going to throw your life away at the time, but you know, when you go get somebody like that, it's, it's a bag involved. Okay, so there's 100000 involved. I mean, the, the rumor was that, that uh, King Vaughn put 100000 up. I don't know that, about that. I don't, I, don't, saying, I don't know. I, don't know. I, I just interviewed FPG Butter about this situation. He actually testified in the case. Uh, that was the rumor. King Vaughn is gone at this point. He got killed a few, few months later. So at this point, it just is what it is. It doesn't even matter. Yeah. But, but 100000 over a murder, especially if there's multiple people involved. But you don't understand the situations of, of, of street gorillas. I do not. You don't? Yeah. 100,000 is a lot of money. I know it's not a lot of money to us, Blair. You look no, at it like that. No, it is not. That's why you looking at it like that. I, I think it's insane. But $100,000, bro, when you from a place like Old Block across the track, you're rich. We don't look at a million like rich. A hundred thousand dollars, you're rich. Right. And and and, and the nigga nigga bust a nigga head for nothing. So you know if a bag involved, uh, come and get you, bro. Like I just I, I I get that part right, and I think and sometimes it don't be even be about. If a nigga crossed the line too much, the bag just extra. Right. Nigga just won't put you down. You you know. I, I I get that, and I get I understand the anger part, and I understand that okay, he dissed my dead homie, and you know I I hate this motherfucker, and you know maybe his side killed some of my people. They're talking about people they actually killed. I, I don't know. I'm just I'm just guessing. But my whole thing is. Okay, you catch a motherfucker in a basement or an alley somewhere. There's no no one around. There's no cameras. There's a reasonable chance to get away with it. Okay. If I kill someone in Lenox Mall, <laughs> you know, in front of the Louis Vuitton store, I don't think there's any chance that I'm getting away with it. You know, with literally cameras everywhere and, you know, a hundred witnesses around. That's your frame of mind. That's my frame of mind. But, but that's also basic human survival, isn't it? Nah, that's your frame of mind. You know, uh, a lot of people, you know, you put something on your face and, you know, that wasn't me, you know, yeah, I mean. Yeah, well. And when, and when, when, when it's, and when it's up, when it's up, it's, it's on site, Vlad, you know, ain't no telling when somebody gonna catch you again and let you make another song. So when it's up, it's, it's on site, wherever, wherever somebody catch you at. That's how it is in the hood. That's how it is in every raw city. I just left Baton Rouge yesterday and I and I did the news for the first time. Yeah, I saw you on there. You know, that was big for me. You know, I, I never been to the news station. <laughs> I 
I went to every news station and uh, did interviews about my Boosie badge. And I was sitting down and uh, waiting to go to the back. And they played the news and it was seven different shootings in the last 48 hours, probably six dead. And I'm looking just like, she was like an action movie, bro. I'm looking, I'm like, it's wilder than it was, man. I'm, I'm, looking, at, I'm looking at it like, then women shot, women. It's, it's, it's crazy, bro, I mean, we gotta, we gotta, we, we as, we as moguls and people, we gotta, we gotta encourage our people to get up out there, bro. Because, man, I came back, I told Tudor, you not, if you go to Baton Rouge again, I'm a kidnap. <laughs> I told him, he, I came in here muggy, he said, what's wrong with you, Dad? I said, if you go to fucking Baton Rouge, I, I was so, I was mad because, man, bro, it's, it's like that, Vlad. Like, I can just imagine Chicago. I just interviewed FBG Butter, and do you know the story about this girl, K.I.? I don't really know the story about it. I mean, he, he watched the die or something. Well, K.I. was a girl. Ain't M.G. Butter the dude who be, who be telling, right? Yeah, he, he cooperated. Yeah. Right, he cooperated, I think, on his dead friends, and he also took the stand in the F.B.G. Duck yeah. case. But he had been at war with these guys. He had been shot like 13 times. It was a mess. But the story basically was there was this 15-year-old named Tuka. Right? Yeah. You know, when people say smoking Tuca, and Tuca yeah, Vail and stuff like that. Yeah, Tuca was a 15 year old. He was good friends with Butter and KI. Um, he got killed uh, at a bus stop by, uh, by O, AKA O Block. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And then the story is, was that KI, who was I think 14 at the time, killed Odie, Odie Perry. Okay. And they said at that point, she was rumored to have killed like 20 different people. Yeah, the girl. The girl. That's the one they say. She was the Vaughn female assassin of, of Chicago. That's the one they say Vaughn stood over, right? That's the story, but FBG Duck was there when she got killed. He got shot himself. And he actually gave a statement, and the person he described was not King Vaughn. He said a dark skinned okay. dude had a mole on his face. That's the opposite of who King Vaughn is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So people were saying, the police were saying it was King Von. I don't know whether Duke is just telling a different story for his own personal reasons, but yeah. yeah, that's the story. But it was crazy to hear how this young teenage girl was out there catching bodies, one of which he said he, she stabbed somebody at a party to death. Like, have you ever heard of girls being like this? Yeah. Really? Multiple murders. Yeah. Tanja Swans. Who's that? She was like that. She's from Baton Rouge? Yeah. You knew her personally? I knew her from seeing her around and hollering at her. What up, Boosie? You know? Yeah. Was she pretty? Nah, she wasn't really pretty. <laughs> she, I mean, she wasn't ugly, but she wasn't really pretty. Okay. She was a gangster. How many people did she allegedly kill? I don't know. Uh... Is she alive still? Nah, nah, they killed her. Yeah. I mean, that's what, that's what Butter said. He said, uh, ain't no killing without killing. Yeah. Once you start going down that road, it'll start going both ways. Yeah. yeah, man. It's sad. You know, I remember you said in an interview, you know, you told Jay the Youngin to get out of his city. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I interviewed Jay the Youngin. Yeah. I stayed telling Jay the Youngin. He got and he got killed where? In his city. In his city. Exactly. In his mama. Yeah. It's awful, man. It's awful. The number of people that I've interviewed, mostly young black, actually all young black men, actually. I've never interviewed any white guys or Spanish guys that got killed after our interview. It's always nah, been yeah. young black men. Yeah. No Asian guys, no Jewish guys, all young black men, probably about a dozen of them at this point. Yeah. Young Greatness, to Chinks Drugs, to Jay the Youngin. Um, I was supposed to do um, 
uh, what's his name? Uh, from Brooklyn. Um, Pop Smoke. Pop Smoke. Uh, I was supposed to do King Von. We were yeah. scheduling it at the time. It, it, it was, uh, yeah, man. It, it's sad. It's sad. And, and I feel like 99.9% of the time it's unnecessary. It could be avoidable. Meaning that if they just moved out the city, you know, if they moved to Arizona, no one's going to go catch a plane ticket to Arizona and start hanging out at the mall, trying to find them somewhere. Nah, these are all crimes of opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I agree. Oh, he, he's a mile away. Yeah. All right, let's go get him. I, I just saw him right down the street. He's on live right now. He's on live right now. Oh, yeah, I see the store in the background. Oh, look, you can see the address behind him. Oh, look, he got a bunch of designer shit with him. You can grab that, too. Oh, look at all the jewelry he wore. Oh, yeah, I know where that's at. I just saw a street sign. Sad, man. Sad. Rest in peace. I just hope that people watch these interviews and just take a lesson from it. Because uh, it, there's nothing cool with ending up on a t-shirt. There's no glory in that. You, you're just going to have a whole bunch of hurt family members and friends and children and, you know, everything else like that. And it never stops. It never stops. It keeps going. Especially when you kill, you kill a honcho. Well, look at the Big Juke situation. Yeah. Big Juke, who's Yo Gotti's older brother, just got killed after leaving a funeral. And I heard he was with his mother when it happened. I think they were coming out of a restaurant or something like that. Did you know Juke at all? Yeah, Juke with my partner. Really? Okay, I never met him. Yeah, Juke with, I my, never met Juke him. with my nigga. I, I interviewed Gotti a long time ago. I to him. Probably about five days for his death. Uh, really? He was setting a verse up with this dude with me and Cali. I had sent him a verse too. Uh, he was setting his verse up, me and this dude in California. Juke know I'm a hustler. He can go get that money and bring it to me, you know. Juke, bro. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, there was a lot of, uh, just a lot of really bad talk that happened leading up to it. You know, if you look on YouTube, Big Juke was uh, laughing about Young Dolph on live. You know, CMG don't miss twice. Uh, you know, talking about snakes and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I don't know if it has anything to do with Dolph. I have no idea. You know, from, out, from the outside looking in, though, that's what it unfortunately appears to be. And once again, in Memphis, it's ugly. I mean, when you heard about the news, what'd you think? I just shook my head, bro. I called, matter of fact, I called Boogie. Who's that? Big Boogie. And that is? The artist, one of um. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Big, one well, of the guy that artists, and you know, I fuck yeah. with Big Boogie, and I just right. told him. I said, man, get your ass from Memphis, bro. I say, man, stop going down there, man. I say, man, I told him, your little girl needs you, nigga. Nigga, nigga, bro, uh, you know. And it was, I just shook my head with Big Juke, man. And people sending me videos. I'm like, man, shit was sad, bro. Like, death sad, bro. Especially when you, when you, Dolph was sad to me, bro. You yeah. Juke was sad, bro. You know, Juke. Jig a good nigga, bro. Jig, Jig, you know, I mean, Big Jig. He, yeah, he going out of legend. He went out of legend, bro. Big Jig, man. <laughs> Big Jig. Yeah, man, listen. I remember when I first heard the news about Lucci getting out in three and a half months, the first thing I did was call Fly. And next time you talk to him, ask him about this conversation. The first thing, I said, number one, is it true? Is he really getting out in three and a half months? He's like, yep. I said, okay. Please promise me you get him the fuck out of Atlanta yeah. the day he gets out. Please, 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 please. I don't care how much it costs. Put him in Vegas, put him in LA, put him in Miami, put him in New York. I don't care. Get him the fuck out of Atlanta. Do not have him step foot in Atlanta at all. I agree. 
there's too many bad feelings and too many interconnected stories and everything else like this in Atlanta right now. Because, you know, I, I interviewed Lucci right before he got locked up. And we were talking about all the bullshit he had been, the, the, the shootings and yeah. him getting caught up in shit. Not anything he did, but shit that he was essentially a victim of. You know what I'm saying? And it was, it, was, it was a crazy amount of situations. Oh, this video shoot shot up. Oh, this situation, we got shot at. Yeah. You, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, just get the fuck out of Atlanta. There's no good reason for Lucci to ever come back to Atlanta. Right. At all. He's got money. He's got fans. It's not a financial. It's like, well, I can't afford to move. No, you can afford to move. Get the fuck out. Right. You know? Yeah, man, I mean... I agree with you, bro. I yeah. agree with you. Look at you. You got the fuck out of Baton Rouge. Yeah. And look at me. <laughs> look. And that was, I feel, as someone that's known you for 20 years, that knew you before you moved, I feel that was the smartest thing you've ever I done ever did. in your entire life. I ever did. In man. your entire the life. Best move I ever did. Because you got to understand that it's not just the, it's not just going to be your enemies and your ops. It's law enforcement too. Mm -hmm. Law enforcement can put a gun under your fucking seat. In it, like man, I mean, it's not just your option. That, and when you do that kind of time, four five years, you got the other people who you don't know. Yeah. From the ops, mm -hmm. the little cousin, he a big cousin. Oh yeah. You know, you got you got it, it's it, it, it's just not worth it, bro. You know. I want Lucha to move too, man. I wasn't thinking like that, but I, I, I definitely, I definitely want him to move. I just, I just left the jewel and got him a piece. Oh. Yeah, I just left the jewel and got him a Lucha piece. Man. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how would you drop on that? Uh, I think like twenty five. Okay. That's your homie though. Yeah. That's what's up. So as soon as he gets out, you're gonna throw it on his neck. Yeah. Hopefully somewhere other than Atlanta. <laughs> 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 you know. Bring yeah. him out to LA, you yeah. know, throw it on his neck. Yeah, because me and his mama, me and his mama, that's, that's my dog, that me and nice. his mom. Uh, well, you don't know this yet, but I just interviewed uh, Terrence Gangster Williams. Okay. And we talked about a bunch of stuff. Number one, he was very happy when you mentioned him. It actually helped his social numbers and everything else like that. And we talked about some of the some of the stuff that he accused you of. Yeah. So, you know, I, I pressed him on the whole PC thing. Yeah. Because he claimed that you were in PC. Yeah. And when I pressed him on it, he admitted, okay, no, Boosie wasn't in PC. He was in a section with all the death row inmates at the time, which he was forced to be in. And then at the point that he was clear to that, then he moved back to the general population. So I'm like, that's not PC. And he goes, okay, yeah, that's on not death PC. death row, this is how you know he, this bullshit. Vlad, on death row, it's not a dormitory. It's individual cells? It's individual cells. The death row inmates can't even be around each other. Right. You, people can't even cut your hair. <laughs> you have to put the clippers in your cell and you have to cut your own hair. When you're on death row, you die in a cell. They don't put you in population and let you walk around again. Only time you walk around is that 30 minutes you come out your cell to go to the phone and shower. Yeah. Man, come on, man. Gangsta, no, man. Right. Well, he actually said that based on your criticism, he has changed his name. He is now Terrence Civilian Williams. <laughs> <laughs> he said he's not a gangster anymore. He don't want no parts of that. He is happy. The YouTube money has gotten him his own apartment. He's got a nice little car. He's living his life. He don't want no piece of that. In fact, he even said that when he got out, he went to Baton Rouge, uh, sorry, he went to uh, uh, New Orleans and baby called him and said, man, you need to get the fuck up out of there. And he, he got right out, he moved. He's living a, a nice quiet life. But what, what's crazy, and for some reason, when I did the first interview with him, this part didn't register. But when he cooperated and, you know, they gave him what was essentially somewhat of a proffer agreement, 
and he told on his dead friends, which he admitted that he did. He admitted himself to 40 murders. Does he didn't tell you, you I mean, nah, that don't surprise me in that city, man. I mean, but gangsta got niggas in, bro. I don't want to comment on it, but. Well, we, 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 just, we talked about the, 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 the wearing the wire allegations. And, and I'll be honest with you because I, I pressed him on this as well. You know what I'm saying? You, you know how I do. We pulled up the paperwork where, and, and I heard about the allegations about how he wore a wire and he got these dudes in MDC Brooklyn, like uh, life in prison. But when you look through the actual paperwork, and I found, and I actually looked up the original paperwork, his name is not on that paperwork. And the other piece of paperwork that they found, they try to kind of link to, the two together has nothing to do it was it was a random like a fear of your life situation but it had nothing to do with the with the paperwork of him uh wearing uh, of a person a, a confidential informant wearing a wire so i'm not gonna stand behind that. you may have something i don't have but from what i saw i didn't see it you can not comment on it if you want <laughs> i don't want to comment on it like <laughs> People that sent me so much shit on this dude, bro. I know. Like, and we went over all this shit. We went over all the papers. It is what it is, man. Yeah, but I don't, I don't want to talk about gangsta. I mean, I'm glad he is civilian. Civilian, you mean? You want to talk about civilian? Yeah, I don't want to talk about, yeah, <laughs> civilian. I mean, <laughs> man, as long as he ain't bad mouthing me, seemed like he didn't cool down with bad mouthing yeah, me. Yeah, no, he didn't, he didn't bad I ain't going to say you. nothing about him. No, you know? I, don't, I don't let people bad mouth you on black TV. Yeah, I mean, I ain't, I ain't got nothing to say about gangsta. I mean, there you go. Let's switch gears. Let's talk about the NBA. So someone just stole your jersey. Yeah. What in the hell happened? Um, they had a girl came up to me saying that uh, you my role model, you my biggest fan. Uh, can I take a picture with you? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, what happened was I put my jersey on the on the counter and she stole it. Oh, she stole it? Yeah. Um, was then, it a side jersey? Nah, it was from Cole Anthony off his back, though. DNA oh, jersey. Okay. And uh, called me, called, called us after that and tried to sell it back to you? <laughs> Yo, the nerve of some people. <laughs> Then they go steal the shit and sell it back to you. How much then, you want for it? Then I got the. I mean, how, how much you want? I think like a thousand fifteen hundred dollars. And then she say, "Well, okay, you gonna have to give me a feature for this." A feature? <laughs> like, bro, like this was some of the most crooked. And I was nice enough to take a picture with the bitch. And uh, then she first she she just was getting caught up in lies. First she said I dropped it. Then she said that uh. I gave it to her friend to take the picture. And I'm, then she say they got put out with the, she couldn't give it back cause they got put out for twerking. And the thing, it, it was just buku lies, bro. So I found the video with me taking a, taking a picture with her and my jersey on the ground. And when I turned to the side, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you after, after the interview. Okay. She pulls my jersey. So you have the footage of it. Yeah. After that, she she went on rambling on Instagram, putting uh adding all of the shade rooms and all that. Oh, so she she wants some clout off. It. Yeah, it was to it be was, a thief. Yeah, it was a clout move, and you know, uh, I got I found out she was some kind of fuck with Trick Trick Daddy. So I, me and Trick got on the phone. Trick like I'm uh, go go over there right now and get your jersey. So I was I sent my people over there and they went and got my jersey from me. Yeah. Trick's a good dude, man. I just interviewed in Miami a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I appreciate he, he's Trick. solid. Yeah, He's I appreciate solid. Trick, man. Trick, yeah. go way back. Yeah, man. I, I love Trick Daddy. Me and him go back during the DVD days, but back back when you and I met, yeah, around that time, he's always been solid. He's always been solid. And it's interesting, I remember. Then she posted what I DM'd her. I'm like, man. Yeah, I, I remember I was just on Drink Champs, right? So by the time this comes out, it's gonna drop. 
And I remember one of the questions, Nori, you know, because Nori has a little drinking games at the end. And he said, uh, respect or, or loyalty? And I said, I said, respect. Because loyalty, to me, isn't, isn't a real concept. You know what I'm saying? Like, loyalty is something that you have to work on every day with somebody. You know, a person going to be loyal because a person, I feel like humans, they reciprocate. You yeah. can't expect for a person to just be loyal just forever right, right. based on something you've done for them 10 years ago. Right. They'll find a reason and certain to be... people are loyal to certain people. Exactly. Respect stays. Respect stays, right? And the story I told was the interview I just did with Trick Daddy, right? So Trick Daddy, when he got his first million dollar check, you know, he, he told Ted Lucas, don't give me the money. I want you to cut a bunch of $20,000 checks to all my people. You know, all the people that helped me come up when I was hustling and everything else like that. And one of the dudes who he cut the, a check to, who he had been taking care of and everything else like that, when he came back to his hood, the dude told him that he ain't, he ain't allowed there no more. He, he ain't allowed to come back to that hood no more. That, that particular basketball court they was playing at. Trick was so hurt that he went to his car and got his gun and pulled out the gun on the dude and said, your daddy got killed up this street from someone who came back and killed him. Your brother got killed down this street from someone who came back and killed him. I'm coming back and I'm going to kill you right now. And I'm going to call your grandmother and tell her. And that motherfucker pressed charges on him. <laughs> sued him, got a restraining order. Every time he performed at a club, the guy would show up so he couldn't perform. He would go to court, the guy would show up so he'd have problems working in the courtroom. This is what loyalty gets you sometimes. Someone who you think you're loyal to, who thinks going to be loyal to you, they'll find a reason to fucking churn on you and try to take you for everything you got. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't believe in loyalty like that. <laughs> That's my life. That's my life. Story. See what I'm talking about? Everybody who done this to me, I was loyal to. Right. You're going to be loyal to someone, but that, that's not going to be reciprocated. No. So, so fuck a loyalty, man. Just put in, expect to get out of a person what you put into that person. Yeah. That's, that's, a lot, that's something you can count on a lot more than loyalty. One of the highlights that I saw from all your NBA courtside appearances was that Luca signed a jersey. Yes. After he scored how many points? 73. 73 points. <laughs> <laughs> I called it the first quarter. If anybody behind me, they tell you. I say he going for 70 tonight. I called it, man. I called it, man. And the crazy part, I was trying to get the jersey before the game. <laughs> I don't think Luca really knew who I was. He might have knew who I was, but I'm like, Kyrie. Because Kyrie always give me a jersey. Kyrie, tell Luca I want the jersey. He's like, all right. Oh, so that's how you got the jersey. I'm like, I asked him before the game. I'm like, Luca, man. I'm asking Tim Hardo, man, tell Luca, man. He did you this before the game. This before the game, man. And he walked over and blessed me, bro. Hey, he... You were the only one that he did that for. Yeah. And then he said, left. Bro, bro, I heard he don't even give his jerseys. Well, it wasn't his jersey. You already had a jersey. Yeah, right? I heard he don't even really, really do that shit, bro. Yeah. Cause they was like, "All right, I'll try." I mean, I mean, <laughs> but I, I was happy as fuck. Man. I mean, that that's a very expensive piece right now. Yeah. 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 Got a lot of them, man. Who do you think is the baddest white boy in the NBA, Luca or Larry Bird? Uh. Baddest white boy in the NBA. Of all time. Of all time. Of all time. Yeah, because obviously Bird ain't playing anymore. Uh, now remember, Bird Bird ain't no fucking joke. Yeah, Bird, Bird got was, a lot of rings Bird and went up mother. against everyone. Remember, him and Magic Johnson were arch enemies at one point. I would say Bird and Luca. <laughs> I you mean, can't decide? I mean, I used to hate Bird, man. Why? Because you're a Lakers fan? Jordan. 
Oh, you're Georgia Tech. Okay. Yeah, I used to. Man, I, Bird, bro. Bird was just a problem, bro. And he was one of the most vicious trash talkers. Bro. Of and all Mc, time. And, see, you know who else was good? Who people? Mikhail. Okay. Mikhail was, he was good as fuck, too, bro. Like, that Boston team, I did not like them. <laughs> my daddy didn't like them. So, you know, I was one of them, them boy kids who, who my daddy didn't like. That's who I didn't like, but. Oh, yeah, no, I interviewed Gary Payton. And I asked him, Gary Payton was considered one of the most vicious trash talkers ever. And he would fight you. But I asked him who the worst trash talker was. He said, oh, Larry Bird. He said, not only would he talk trash to you, but he would tell you what he's going to do to you. So I'm about to shoot this three from the left side. Boom. Okay, I'm about to go to the right and shoot this layup. Boom. <laughs> like, he would tell you. He I would tell you. I've seen the five greatest white boys that I didn't see was Dirk, Bird, Nowitzki, Nowitzki, uh, Jason Williams. Uh, that's four. Uh, Jokic? Oh, the, uh, <laughs> the Joker. Well, I'm sure, the Joker, like the Joker, man. I got to get a Joker jersey too, so if, uh -huh. Joker, uh, next thing in the year when you come back to Atlanta, look out for me, man. Right. I'm going to collect you go back, there's Jerry West. Never seen him play. Yeah, it's before our time. Yeah, never seen John him. John Stockton. John Stockton. Yeah, John Stockton was bad. I just used to love white chocolate though. Mm -hmm. White chocolate was a bad motherfucker. <laughs> he pull up on a dime. I used to like white chocolate, bro. White chocolate was a bad motherfucker. Yep. Well, you said, uh, I don't think they want me to all-star games. You know, I'm going to turn up. Uh, I ain't tripping, though. I'm getting the bag this weekend. You know, for real, for real, the people love Boosie. So, so what happened with you and the all-star? Uh, it just felt like a lot of people was blocking me, bro. Like, you know, like, I wasn't too happy about it, man. I mean, I was all over the city. Sold out shows every night, three, four shows every night. But every time I'm trying to get into all-star venues or uh, things that's going on was like a blockage, Vlad. And you know I'm not crazy, you know. Because, you know, at the all-star, it's not like uh, the games you can just buy front row seats. Right. They already got they, yeah. the whole <laughs> things. Those are and, spoken for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they can give to who they want, but, you know, I'm... You know, I, I just feel like, you know, I'm one of the biggest supporters of the NBA, you know? Yeah, like, I mean, how much do floor seats cost in Atlanta? Depends on who playing. What's the range? Uh, if the Pistons playing, it might be uh, two seats, because you can't buy one seat. Mm -hmm. Two seats might be 3000 3,500 if the Pistons playing. Per seat or both seats? Both seats. That's not bad. But if LeBron James playing or uh, Stephen Curry, they probably 7,500 apiece. Okay. So it depends on the, the team. Yeah, I mean, I just went to a, a Clippers game for the first time. Yeah. And uh, I think some of those seats were like 25,000 or something like that. Yeah, it depends on, yeah. it depends on who they play. You right. Know, so. And they're playing Sacramento. Yeah, it depends on lost. who they play, so. It was kind of crazy how the Clippers, with a, a team that stacked, lost to Sacramento. You're talking about Kawhi Leonard. Yeah. <laughs> James Harden. I just got Kawhi Westbrook. Leonard. I just got Kawhi Leonard jersey. When they George. Came, when they like, came you know last I mean? week. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, uh, Chris Brown was supposed to play in the NBA uh, Celebrity All-Star Game. They got uninvited to the last minute. You heard about that? Yeah, they need to leave Chris Brown. That's a, that's a fucking shame. You know how many niggas that had domestic violence cases in the industry that swept under the rug? Like, it, it, bro, I, I hate what they do to Chris Brown, bro. Right, cause this was what? He's, the, he's, he's next under Michael, bro. As far as performing, as far as 
Bro, Chris Brown is is that nigga. You, bro, Chris Brown is a bad motherfucker. You put I, Chris Brown above Usher? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I can see the argument for it. Yeah. You put Chris Brown above R. Kelly? Uh, performance. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, performance. Yeah, R. Kelly just dance. R. Kelly, he just lick his tongue. <laughs> and lick the towel. Well, yeah, I mean, Suge Knight actually talked about it. He basically said, you know, there's a double standard where they're not forgiving Chris Brown, but they let Dr. Dre do the Super Bowl. And Dr. Dre beat up D. Barnes back in the day. You know about that, right? I mean, I've, I've, I've heard. I've yeah, heard, I've heard. He, he beat up a, a TV host named D. Barnes. I, so it's I, a real I, thing. I learned from your interviews, all this shit. That's, you know, when yeah. I watch you, you know, I... I hear all the No, Dre it's a real story. thing. She actually, I mean, when he did a documentary, he even brought her on to talk about it. Some real shit. It's not, it's not some made up Double shit. Double standards, bro. Like, bro. Well, but I think like also, you know really what did it for Chris Brown was the photo. Yeah. There was no photo of D Barnes beat up. Yeah. And when you look at a lot of these other domestic violence situations, there's no photos. That photo was ugly. Like her, both of her eyes were essentially, you know, swollen up. Had that photo not come out, I think that nothing would have happened at all. I think he'd be at a Michael Jackson level potentially right now. But that photo will, will you know, that photo was a motherfucker. And look, I interviewed an investigator who was on that case on Chris Brown's defense team. And he basically said that Chris Brown was attacked first by Rihanna. She put, you know, and people need to stop like saying that this doesn't happen. A lot of times the girl is the aggressor. Right. A lot of times you got to get a bitch off. Yeah. Oh, you gonna have the black guy. Exactly. They got some bitches to punch the shit out you. No, Chris Brown had marks on him as well. They, they got a bad. bitch to punch the shit out you. Oh yeah. You let Chris Sean Rock punch on your motherfucking head. Yeah. Boy, your head gonna look like you've been in the room with um, Mike Tyson. Have you ever been around Rihanna? Uh, nah. No. Rihanna's big. She's bigger than I you. I was at a game one time when I interviewed her back in the day. She was with heels. She was my height, and I'm six two. Yeah. And she was. She's big framed. She's yeah. not a dainty little girl. Yeah. Rihanna could beat up some men. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. I feel that, bro. I feel that. You know, so now it's up to the man to respond uh, in, in a minimal way. I understand it. Right. But, but, you know, like, like for example, I, I interviewed Roger Bonds, right? He used to be Puffy's bodyguard. Right. And he told me flat out that he'd be in the car with Puffy and Cassie, and Cassie would just smack the shit in his face, and it would smack Puffy in his face. And then right. he would jump in the back seat and they would start tussling and he'd have to roll up the windows and people would be watching. Not that I'm saying that that's right by puffies, you know, right, but I mean, right. you mind your business and a girl punches you in the face. Yeah, man. Sometimes that, you just react. When relationships, all that, you're going to have them feisty type of women who, you know, they're going to do it. It happened to me a couple of times, bro. Yeah. Three, four, five times, different women. Yeah. You just got to know how to, you got to know how to, you know, not inflict harm on them too much, but... You gotta know that. You gotta know that, yeah. that, 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 that little that little that little restraint move. Yeah. Sit, and, sit your motherfucking ass down. And, and you have to take a step back. Yeah, you ain't gotta punch him and do yeah, all yeah, that. You yeah, gotta no. put him in that motherfucking boosie, that boosie, that boosie oosie. Right. I, I've been in fucked up situations too. Yeah, but, man. But, it, but a woman what, what, what you gotta you up, man. A woman. Will, right. But you do have to realize at some point that unless the woman has a weapon of some sort, they really can't do that much damage to you. Not like a man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they might maybe bruise your eye a little bit, but they can't like knock you out. They can't knock a tooth out. Right. You know, it, so so you have to kind of take that into account. But as a human being, sometimes when you get attacked, you're you're you don't you don't even think about what happens next. You just react. Right, right, right. right. And then, I don't agree with it, man. I used to I used to get on my one of my cousins' ass, bro. Like, yeah, yeah, beat him. Yeah, yeah, bro, yeah, bro. He'd be get out of line. He go put Timberland boots on. Yeah. And then, ultimately, it won't matter who started it. 
Right. He's going to be the, the one getting put in handcuffs. Right. Well, Draymond Green, he's back. Yeah. Did you see that whole stabbing thing that he did? <laughs> Bro, I was on the kitchen floor. I was on the kitchen floor. <laughs> Like, did Draymond just threaten to stab hey, somebody? What the fuck just man, happened? I was on the kitchen floor. <laughs> asked my boys, bro. Man, I was on the kitchen floor with tears in my eyes, bro. Hey, bro. Yo, who does this? I mean, does he not know the cameras are watching him right now? Did Didn't he not know he just got suspended indefinitely? Bro, four days after he was hosting the, uh, the All-Star game. Yo, I don't get it. I'm starting to think they, 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 bro, this shit is crazy, bro. I was like, damn, that just happened. Now he hosting the All-Star game? Draymond might have a body buried in his backyard that no one knows about. <laughs> bro. That, like, Draymond seems just, like, like the more you learn about him, the, the crazier he just becomes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man, my boy ran in the kitchen. Boosie. Your boy flashed out boost. I'm like, what, man? I don't know what he finna show me. You say, watch what Draymond do. Man. He said, stab, 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 stab. <laughs> I love to have him as my teammate. I'm sorry, man. Oh, yeah. I would tell him to do the most. If he listened to me, I would tell him to scare every motherfucker. Man. I, I would be sitting shit. Hey. Motherfuckers just drop the ball and run. <laughs> I wish I had a teammate like that, bro. Like, come and choke, motherfucker, bro. I wish I had. Bro, that, that what you looking for, bro. Oh, like, uh, uh, yeah. Oh, my Draymond God. could have played on the bad boys. The oh, Pistons. completely. Oh, completely. Pistons. Completely. He could, he, yeah. 100%. 100%. He's the new Bill Lambeer. He could have played on the, the bad boys Pistons team right now, I'm telling you. Yes. I agree. I agree. Oh. Uh, Kevin Durant, he said, uh, how come he's never in the GOAT conversation? He said, what haven't I done? Does he have a point? Yeah. Why do you think that when people talk about these conversations, KD gets left out of the conversation? Because he joined Steph Curry. Because he jumped around? Yeah. Because he joined Steph Curry. Then. That's what I think at, at that time. But LeBron did the same thing. Right. LeBron went to Miami, then he went to Lakers. The big three. He yeah. went to the Miami. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Kevin Durant is one of a kind. Who that height can shoot like that? Who that height can dribble like that? Yeah. Who that height can play defense like that? Yeah. Like Kevin Durant is a is a GOAT, bro. Yeah. You gotta mention him in the top five, top bro. Yeah. Kevin Durant is a bad motherfucker. But he never gets mentioned, though. You I notice know. that. I you, know, you, I mean, he has a point in what he's saying. He just just never really gets mentioned. Bro, I'm telling you what and he's got him. rings and everything. I'm How many, telling rings? You How many what, rings? Does he have one ring or? I think he got two. Two rings? Two, maybe three. Two. Hold on. Two, I think. He got two. Two? He got two. So he got one um, with the Warriors. He got two with the Warriors. Two with the Warriors. Okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right, yeah. Two of the Warriors. Yeah. Well, listen, he, you know, he played in the finals with a torn ACL and tore up his ACL even worse. I mean, you know, I mean, you can't even say he doesn't have heart. Yeah. He got it all. Yeah, KD is, he one of my favorites. I, I love to any a good person, man. I mean, yeah, I got three Kevin Durant jerseys, every team almost. Yeah, no, he he hit me once. I remember he DM'd me and was like, hey, man, like, you're one of my favorite interviewers. I watch your shit all the time. Like, yeah. keep doing your thing, you know? And they say he making music now. I ain't heard yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He rapping now. Is he straight? He pretty uh, good. He I haven't heard of him and uh, Stolly. Oh, okay, okay. Did, did a song together. I saw it on social media that he was yeah. making music. No, man, like, I, I got to meet him one of these days. We've never actually met face-to-face. -face. When I tried to DM him back, he had, like, that weird setting where you can't, like, respond because he has so okay. many followers and shit, so. Okay. Yeah, man. Kevin, hit me up, man. You know, I just want to thank you for the compliment. Yeah. I said, I don't want nothing from you. I just want to, you know, say thank you for the compliment. Well, you had made some statements about uh, the trans uh, high school players. Yeah. Um, you said the female Rodman is hurting all the girls on the basketball court in Massachusetts. Two months ago, a trans 
a uh, girl knocked a girl's tooth out of her mouth. Like, what the her fuck? Her whole parents, tooth, all her teeth. All her teeth. Yeah. Parents need to stop letting the kids play against men, female Rodmans. Schools yeah. across the country need to forfeit every game. It's not fair to our kids. This nation, this is sick. They say he has a full beard. Oh, my yeah. God. Parents, we have to fight for our kids' dreams and rights, knocking out our daughter's teeth out. Parents, we have to do something about this simple, about this simple as that. It's unfair. They need their own league. They need their own league. Yeah, have a trans league. America. Trans <laughs> Transcontinental. They need they need their own <laughs> and the people cross seas are transcontinental. <laughs> yeah, they they need their own league. I mean, every person who plays against them, the women, when they come on a ground on a court, they should sit down and forfeit. It will stop. If our parents get on get on Capitol Hill and say we're not engaging in no more women's sports that has that in it, bro, the female Rodman and her like eight, nine people. In three months. It's sad, bro. You knocking people teeth and your elbows are too fucking sharp and heavy. Yeah. A woman elbow might might give them a knot. You have a fucking force field in your arm. <laughs> Sit your fucking ass down. Like I said, the <laughs> swimmer. Go swim against Michael Phelps. Go jump in that fucking pool with Michael Phelps and watch what your ass get. Yeah. It's not fair to us kids who've been training against women their whole life yeah. to break records, and you come in wide-ass back, wide-ass shoulders, <laughs> swimming, your bones are different. <laughs> yeah. It's not fair. Get your own league. I'm sick of them. <laughs> I don't care what, no, I'm sick of them. Mm. You're going to box out every fucking body. It's not right, bro. It's not right. You're going to have a motherfucker looking like Shaq in a minute. Yeah. She gonna, you're going to be 7'2", seven 7'1", seven and it's going to be acceptable? Yeah. And, and, and our center is 5'7"? <laughs> it's going to have 110 rebounds in one game. 84 points a game. 84 to 3. <laughs> like, bro, we got, we got, as parents, we got to say when they walk on the court, it's a forfeit. Forfeit, yeah. Laws is changed with standing up for rights. True. If our parents not going to fight for us, how the kid going to fight for us? Do you know what happened in Canada? Nah. So, so they passed a law in Canada saying that they can't uh, basically discriminate sporting events based on the gender that you're born with. So a male powerlifter <laughs> entered a female powerlifting competition. It's and legal. broke every record <laughs> just to prove a point. So he basically competed against a bunch of women and broke every world record in women's, women's weightlifting. <laughs> just, just to prove how stupid the law is. They need their own league with their own mascot. Yeah. They got to have trans mascots, everything. Right. Yeah, you got it. Caitlyn yeah. Jenner, you know, could uh could be there. Caitlyn Jenner could be the uh the CEO of the league. The coach, yeah. She, she can is. get some. She can get some portions of the league. Right. She's an athlete, so she knows. She's, what she's an doing. athlete. Right. She can be on the board. Yeah. It's ways they can control their own environment, but don't take that away from something you're not. Yeah, I agree. Something you're not. Next, they're gonna be going to softball. Every pitch, that motherfucker going across the motherfucking <laughs> Wrigley Field. Bow! Softball! No, motherfucker, go, go play with Ushinama, uh, Utama. Yep. Go hit that ball. Yep. You're going to go to softball. <laughs> I, I, let me, bro, because you not. Hey. Because I had daughters in sports. Okay. It wouldn't have went down if I was there. So if you were... Going to a sporting event that your daughter, one of your daughters was playing. Yeah. And there was a trans player on the other team. You would tell your daughter to sit out. Yeah, I would tell my daughter to sit out and encourage the, the I would go to the coach and tell them to, to sit out also. I'll put a suit on me. Mm. Suit me up. You're going to play for the girls team. Yeah. I'm going to tell all the guards. Every time, every time that motherfucker go clip them. Yeah. Put on, your, uh, put on your Bob head. Marley uh, dreadlock yeah, hat. Yeah, man, bro. Like, <laughs> bro, that, that's not fair to all girls, man. Nah, I agree. You know. I agree. A woman can't hit a man, but she... A woman can't hit a man, but he can go play her sport? 
yeah. and Elborn. Yeah. You go to jail for hitting a woman, but you don't go to jail for bowing her and knocking her damn teeth out. So this has to stop in the United States. This has to stop. Because well, if you give somebody an inch, what do they take? A mile. A mile. Right. And you've said you feel like you're the only one speaking up for straight people. I am. I'm like, I'm like the, because everybody's been bullied. Yeah. The LGT, the LGTBQ, whatever it is, whatever it is. <laughs> LGT I don't hate them. I, BQ, yeah. I just I did a song called My Letter to the LGBTQ. And I'm explaining that I don't hate, you know. But they have bullied every athlete, actor, celebrity in the world. You can't even go on an interview and say, I'm straight, I like pussy. You, don't, you ain't going to hear no athletes say nothing because you know what? They're afraid. They've been bullied. And if you, if you, if you say something about them, they're going to turn it on you and say, oh, you gay. <laughs> if you say you're not gay, they're going to say, oh, you gay. Everybody's been bullied. We're scared to even say we like pussy. PR is going to every, every, every interview and say, do not ask about anything with that. I didn't seen it. Mm. I didn't seen it, Vlad. The whole world is afraid. They're afraid to say anything. People don't want to lose their shit. And I respect most, because uh, uh, I wouldn't want to lose my shit neither. But I pay myself. Listen, man, shout out to your gay road manager. He's the one that helped make sure this interview happened today. Right. When I couldn't reach you, right. I reached out to your, to your gay road manager. He hit me right back. He was professional. He was on point. He was like, okay, we can't do this day. We're going to do this day on this time. I called in the morning. He said, we're set, and here we are. You, get you know what I mean? I have gay employees. I have gay friends. Me shout too, Shout out to bro. my man, Jason. I got gays Unlocked. in my family. I mean, yes. It's not, it, it's just- I, I, have every, gay, I have gay people in my family too. Everybody, we're yeah. bullied. The whole world has been bullied. Yeah. They can't even say they like pussy. <laughs> I like you're that. a grown man with, you're masculine there, but out your mouth, you can't even say you like pussy. I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it, it's, it's crazy, man. Well, uh, did you watch uh, Mace talking about uh, D Wade wearing nail polish? He compared it to seeing Jordan oh. lingerie. <laughs> <laughs> now that's an image that I had a hard time getting out of my head when he said that. <laughs> hey, hey, bro. Hey, that shit. That shit was funny as fuck. That, that shit was funny. That shit was funny. I was dying laughing, bro. I, I'll be honest, man. I, I really dislike the whole man with nail polish thing, man. It's sad. I, I just don't. It just doesn't make any sense to it's me. It's sad. It, it's nail polish. It's a, it's a female thing. It's a female trait. It's since, a female since thing. Since the 1900s. Since the, the, the 1500s, probably. You know oh, what I mean? It goes way you know, before that. It, it's a... I, I don't know why. You gotta stop doing what women do. Women have it enough challenges facing other women to be prettier than them. Yeah. Now Social gotta, media, is, everybody wants to be. Now. They don't have time to go against the men too. Right. They don't have that time. Let the women get their glory. Most of them, they underpaid. They let the women get their glory. Yeah. And the women, I blame them too. They tolerate it. They tolerate it. You've never heard a woman. You don't hear these women nowhere on the podcast, nowhere saying that you look like a bitch. Right. Oh, you saw him. He looked like a hoe. Well, I mean, Gabriel, because they will stop it. Vlad. Right. Gabriel Union obviously ain't saying nothing. Bro, bro, bro. If listen. I was Gabriel Union, I would have been like, take that shit off. Listen, listen. Listen, if, if, if our, you know, if your son wants to be trans and this is the way he wants to do it that's fine we support him this is this is your child this is my stepson but you don't have to join into this you're not du Dwayne why Wade has man, never been why would a man yeah want to put what a woman does to their body right I mean well Russell Westbrook wore a dress see remember those pictures you remember those pictures the question is, why would a man do this? Yeah, I don't get it. 
I mean, and the women have to speak up. We all we do everything. Most men who like who like women. Yeah. Who like women. I'm not gonna say everything we do, being flashy, getting jewelry, we do that to impress women. Yeah. Putting on nice clothes, putting on a nice suit. Yeah. We do that to impress women. Right. What women are impressed when you put on nail polish? I, I don't, don't know, know of any. The freaky ones. <laughs> the ones that like to get freaky, freaky, freaky. The ones like to put strap-ons on. Yeah, the freaky, freaky, <laughs> the freaky, freaky motherfuckers. We, the women have to start speaking up, man. Because if the women start speaking up, it will die down, Vlad. I agree. It will die down tremendously. Because mm -hmm. I don't give a damn. We care about what a woman says. Of course. A man can tell you something, but if a woman tell it to you, it hurt much more. Mm -hmm. So the women have to speak up. Yeah, start getting a hashtag for them. Bitch boy. <laughs> Hoe ass. <laughs> Sissy bitch. <laughs> Nail punk. I bet they'll stop it. Get yep. them a hashtag. <laughs> Make all memes out of them. Uh. Social media, nothing but memes with the nails. And the purses. And I make, put them on memes. Every time they scroll their fucking phone, they see their ass. Right. Yeah, if all the one with nails, put Daisy Dukes on their ass on the mails. And have their ass cheeks sticking out. Right. To where when their kids go and scroll down, they see their ass cheeks and their nails. And say, Dad, I didn't know you was a woman, too. I bet that'll get you right if your fucking son walk in there and say, Daddy, I didn't know you wanted to be a woman. You're five-year-old or six-year-old. Mm. Dad, Dad, I didn't know you wanted to be a woman. Let's talk about the Super Bowl. Great game, by the way. It Great broke, game. It broke viewing records. Great game, my boy. Did you bet on the game? Yeah. yeah. And you, of course, bet on the Chiefs. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't go against Patrick. Yeah, I know. I, I'm from the Bay. So I was obviously rooting for San Francisco. Right, right. It did not work out for me. It seemed like it did. We were right there. And if they hadn't changed the rules for overtime, we would have won. I don't think they knew the rules themselves. You know, they <laughs> scored that field. They're like, we won. No, no, wait, wait, what? They get the ball too? What? Yeah. Uh, but it was a hell of a game. And you're right. It's, it's hard to bet against Mahomes. Yeah. You know. He's the best quarterback ever. Oh, better than Tom Brady? Yeah, he got Tom by far. Well, he's not there yet, but he could be. Yeah, he doesn't, have the, like he doesn't a, have the rings yet. He doesn't have the rings yet. But he has, yet. He has years ahead of him. He's, yeah. He has years. I think he's going to catch Tom with the rings, and overall, he's a better quarterback. Yeah, and you know. Tom Brady is a pocket quarterback. Yeah, yeah. And, and you with know, a I, hell of a line. Yeah. Let's keep it real. Travis Mahomes is a pocket quarterback. Uh-huh. He's a rusher. Yes. He can throw sideways. Have you ever saw Brady throw sideways? No. Have you ever saw him pitch that way? No. Like, bro, he, this is a dip. I watched since Joe Montana. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes. And when he throws the ball, the ball is right here. <laughs> On a platter. I mean, he, you don't have to do like this. No, it's right there. It's right here. Put your fingers out. He's the best I've ever seen. Yeah, no, I just interviewed Michael Vick uh, maybe about a month ago or so, and I feel like he kind of follows the Michael Vick blueprint of quarterbacks who could also run and, and anything else like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Which, you know, Tom Brady is not like, Tom Brady just has an extreme amount of throwing skill. Right. You know, let's not get that part twisted. But I feel like Michael Vick set the stage for the next generation of quarterbacks. Oh, he did, definitely. Yeah. Def no, round of cutting out. Then Michael Vick. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Let's talk about the halftime show, though. I would say that the Usher halftime show was second only to Michael Jackson's halftime show. I thought it was that good. Agree or disagree? I didn't say it wasn't good. Do you think it was great? Uh... I don't know about great. I mean, which halftime shows do you feel are better, aside from Michael? Would you say the Michael Jackson halftime show? Was uh, 
I don't even really watch the halftime shows. To, you know, oh, okay. I, I, don't. I usually don't either, but th this right here I thought was a standout. I, th I thought they just killed it. I, you know, I, I don't really watch the halftime show. Okay, but you did comment on the halftime show. Right. You said that uh, Usher needs to apologize to Swizz Beats. Yeah. For the Alicia Keys embrace. Yeah. The memes were ruthless. Yeah. When that picture came out of him hugged up, it's like your wife with her work husband on Monday. <laughs> you know, some shout out to Swiss, man. I know him. I hit him up yeah, right yeah, afterwards. Man. I, I even like, hey, DM Swiss after he, I saw what he said yeah. and told him, man, bro, I said what I said because that's how I feel. Not, you know, I got love yeah. for you, bro. I, I look at you like. Yeah, he's an OG. You know, he's an OG. I, no, I, I actually know him personally. I texted him. I said, listen, man, uh, don't let the bullshit take away from the level of greatness that your family's experiencing right yeah. now. Your wife was in the goddamn Super Bowl halftime show. Right, like, right. that's something that's going to hold on forever. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, so fuck all the And bullshit. what happened is going to hold on forever. <laughs> Let's keep it real. She was so, caught off guard. So do you feel She that was caught off guard. She was expecting that, huh? She wasn't. In, that wasn't in the rehearsals? It wasn't in the fucking rehearsals. <laughs> Because if it was in the rehearsals, she would have had time to ask her husband. She know what's going to, you know what's going to go viral. If it was in the rehearsals, you would have had time to say, honey, you think this would be okay with, and Swiss probably, I mean, anybody, she would have said no, because she knows the reaction of social media. Yeah. She was surprised. Mm. He got sucker punched, bro. I mean, Usher know what he did. He did it to Nicki Minaj, uh -huh. slapped her ass. Yeah, I remember that. No, he, he was like bumping then he, her, then he went back, bumping her ass. Bumping yeah. her ass, then slapped it. <laughs> yeah. Then he just said on the thing, I know I shouldn't, I shouldn't have did that with Nicki. Like, you shouldn't have did that with, with, with this man. This is a man's wife. If he would have did that to a Muslim, his head would have been cut off. <laughs> well, yeah, no, it's funny. Because, you know, Usher obviously has a history of this type of thing. He, I, he, 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 he thinks Palmer. he's immortal to an ass <laughs> <laughs> he thinks he's immortal to an ass whooping. Right. Oh. Like, it's, I, I'm an Usher fan for his music. Yeah. But what he is disrespect, man. Right. I, I just interviewed Michael Blackson, and he said that uh, Usher only pulls this with uh, women who have light-skinned boyfriends. <laughs> he never, he's never pulled that with anyone who's got a dark-skinned boyfriend or husband. <laughs> and if you look. What you think Will Smith would have did to him? <laughs> slapped him. Tackled his ass. <laughs> Will would have been waiting in the tunnel. <laughs> My wife, man. Will would have. Boy, you can't do. Bro, like what he did, he's no, he, he knows what he's doing. He's laughing afterwards. Mm. He's, he's, he's laughing afterwards. <laughs> he's motherfucking, bro. That was, that lady was, she was, did he just do this? Did he just do this? Did he just put his piece on my ass? Let's keep it real. <laughs> Around my hip. This wasn't in rehearsals. <laughs> it wasn't. What if the rehearsal lady right here looking right now, you come on Vlad TV. Yeah. And you bet not lie. <laughs> she was caught off guard. Alicia did this. She, this is not a movie. Yeah, just go with it. <laughs> this is not a movie. It wasn't scripted and wrote in the... Yeah. It's not a movie. She plays the piano. This is not, this is not a Tyler Perry movie. No. No, she plays the piano. Yeah. And she when, it. when have you ever saw somebody on back of Alicia Keys like that? Mm. I haven't seen it. I was mad because I fuck with Swiss, bro. Yeah. I, I look at, at the Swiss as a legend, how he stayed in his own lane. Yeah. What he produced for DMX. Yeah. Like, bro, like, I mean, hey, I mean, it's just certain things you don't do, especially when that W is involved. Wife. Yeah. That's a whole different. Yeah, man, listen, I fuck with Swiss. Swiss is the first person i ever seen wear a Richard Mill watch. I don't even know what it was back then. You know what I'm saying? Swiss has been getting money. Has right. Been, has been functioning at the highest levels. Songs right. with everybody from Jay Z, right. to DMX, of course. Right. To he had my boy mad, two of my boys. Yeah, yeah, they was pissed off, cause these, you know, these these G's, like they was pissed off. He say, man, nigga, making light skin. They was pissed off. They was pissed off. But I, but you know, some people got strong marriages. 
And you know, that, that don't affect shit, man. It, I mean, but I just had to speak about how I felt about the situation. It's just, man, you don't do that, man. You don't, if it's in a rehearsal, if it ain't in a rehearsal, man, you don't do that. You give a, you give a woman, a wife, that respect to ask her husband, is this cool if I come? Then you smile and look. He freaking out. <laughs> the nigga looked and smiled. <laughs> like, yeah, I just did it. I just did it. People tell my Boosie, you and you so fucking insecure. I'm an insecure Scorpio motherfucker. Mm. I'm a you, you sure right, because I would have been thinking. He wanted her for me. Huh. I'ma take it there. Well, I mean, you saw I, what happened. Hey, bro, I'm a, I, I, I was, I was, I was, I didn't like it. Well, you saw what happened with Kiki Palmer after that whole situation off stage. Right. They ended up breaking up, and then there was a bunch of domestic violence that happened. Another light skinned dude, by the way. I just want to point that out. <laughs> just want to point that out. <laughs> Man, don't make me think he's trying light skinned dudes, bro. Don't make me think he tried all light skinned dudes. He's trying the light skinned dudes, man. Okay, he ain't gonna try Chris Brown. What, what, what's Swiss Brown's? Uh, uh, what, what's uh, Swiss Beast's complexion? Light skin. What's uh, Kiki Palmer's boyfriend's uh, complexion? Yeah. See where I'm going with this? <laughs> well, you said if R. Kelly would have gotten in trouble, his songs would be amazing. Super Bowl halftime show. You can hear the voice now. I believe I can fly. Step in the name of I love. I believe I can fly. I wish Step the world's the greatest. Name I wish, I wish. Fiesta. It's the world's greatest. Fiesta, fiesta. <laughs> who would do a sh Bro, who would? Let's, let's keep it real. Let's keep it real now. The songs I name. And we talking about more than that. Those songs have so much power. With that voice, when a woman loves, <laughs> nobody would be able to compete with a halftime show from R. Kelly. And I, and I didn't name one sexual song. This is the greatness of it. Mm -hmm. I didn't name one sexual song so you could say, Yeah, there's no bump and grind in the- There's no uh, bump and grind, and no, no, Sex no, Me <laughs> Part Two. Yeah. Woo de woo, woo de woo. I'm talking about it's no ignition. It's no <laughs> no my, ignition remix. You remind me of my G. None of that. Yeah, none, none of that. that. <laughs> Nothing trapped in the closet. None of that. No, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not that song. <laughs> but just leave the that song for the after party. <laughs> got them city, bro. If the songs, oh yeah, it would be amazing. Think about it. he would do. I believe I could fly, and Dubs would like go Dubs over there. Fly. <laughs> Doves fly, <laughs> you know. I mean, uh, yeah. man, we gotta keep it real. Yeah, I had a lot of people say, "Boosie, I can't stand that motherfucker R. Kelly." This was in my, but you're right. You're right. I just was listening to every song you played. Fiesta, fiesta, all of Mexicans coming around. Everybody just. <laughs> Step in the name of love, T.D. Jakes out there. <laughs> then you bring the one with Usher, and they arguing over the same girl. Right. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, let's keep it real. Yeah, but unfortunately, it's never going to happen. Nah. No, I mean, like, you know how you say never say never? I'm saying never. <laughs> there is no way in God. <laughs> I don't care if R. Kelly gets out at 89 years old, and everyone who remembers this is dead. They're still not going to perform the Super nah. Bowl. It will never happen. It will never happen. But it's a nice, it's a nice what if. Next year, the Super Bowl is going to be where? New Orleans. That's right. Yeah. In what state? Louisiana. And where are you from? I'm the king of Louisiana. <laughs> you see the jersey now. Right. Now, uh, Deion Sanders said that he was talking to uh, Roger Goodell about having a little Wayne perform. At the next Super Bowl. Yeah. Weezy and, got if it go down, Weezy gotta bring me out. I mean, you gotta give it to Wayne as a motherfucking force of Louisiana. Yeah. You know, you I can't take anything that. away from Wayne nah. in his catalog. Never. Right. Never. Now to bring Boosie, but you guys don't have any songs together. Nah, that don't mean that. 
He can right. bring me out for the for the culture. Right. What song would you perform in the Super Bowl? Uh, White Man, I don't know, set it off. Hmm. Not uh, independent? Uh, I mean... I'll perform Rocket Man. You know I mean, like, <laughs> whatever they ask you to perform, <laughs> you, you know that'll 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 be big for me, bro. And, yeah. And I'll if they give it to I'm, see. I'm the type if I, bro, if somebody give me a chance, I'm a, I'm gonna show out. Bro. I mean, you can't even say, well, they're not gonna bring out Wayne because he's a gangster rapper because they just had Dr. Dre. Right, right. And when Dr. Dre brought with him, that whole West Coast. Yeah, I mean Snoop. I mean, Snoop, and if you, yeah, you're right. Snoop, and if you talk in Louisiana, yeah, who you gotta bring? Right. Dr. Trey brought out Snoop. Fit it, bro. Who you gotta bring, bro? You know what I think is gonna happen though. What? I think Jay Z go perform. Jay Z go perform because he, he's in charge of that shit. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. So Wayne ain't gonna be calling the shots. Well, Wayne is not calling the shots in the NFL. So when at you all. when they pick you, do they do they still have the if you want to bring somebody in to perform, they got to deal with the bosses. Uh, well, yeah. If I you mean, tell I think, them it's yeah, part yeah. of your set. No, no. The whole thing is a negotiation, obviously. Yeah. It has to be signed off. Like, for example, like if you remember the the Super Time half uh, halftime show. The noise. <laughs> yeah, that's my ankle monitor. Oh, is it going off? Nah, it's it's fully charged. <laughs> we gonna keep this in the footage. <laughs> this is gonna be part of the footage. Yeah, I can't let it go dead, right. man. No, I... well, like, like for example, like when you remember that the halftime show with Dr. Dre, he brought out Kendrick. Yeah. And Kendrick had to censor some of his lyrics. Oh, okay. From from the song he performed. Okay. And they asked, you know, Dre whether like Kendrick had a problem with it. He's like, no. Everyone understood the gravity of the performance, and no one was trying to. Okay. You know, have an ego about it. Everyone knew, okay, cool. These are the rules. We're going to go along with the rules because obviously this is the biggest stage in the world right now. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, but from what I understand, Jay Z is in charge of kind of coordinating everything. So, and I think they actually asked him, they said, well, how come you don't perform yourself? He goes, well, I, I don't, you know, I don't want it to really be about myself. I'm trying to, you know, okay. I don't want to be selfish about it, basically. But I think at some point, Jay Z is going to be like, yeah, it's my turn now. Okay. Well, and it might be next year. You don't know. Well, Jay Z, if you perform in New Orleans, <laughs> Bring me out. Yes. I, I, a closed mouth don't get fed. Right. I ain't never, be, I done been told no a million times in my life. That's what made me great. Right. So if Jay Z watching right now, I mean, put me on, Jigga. Right. And from what I understand, Usher got paid $600 to the performance. Who? Usher. You don't get paid? $600. That's all you get paid? Right. But I mean, but think about what, what's going to happen to your streams and your shows and everything else like that. What, someone's going to say, no, I don't think anyone actually turned down a Super Bowl performance. Hell no. Nah. Yeah. Hell no. Nah. They could charge him to perform and they'll say yes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We need a million dollars. I got to scrape a million dollars then. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, you said uh, Travis and Taylor uh, Swift need to go make a baby. Yeah. I agree. I love them together. Yeah, they're a nice couple. Yeah, bro. And Travis, yeah. he just fly, bro. Dude just. Yeah. Dude just, bro. They're trying to give him credit for uh, for the fade. Saying that he yeah, he got popularized the, game. the yeah, fade. Yeah, he got the game fucked up. <laughs> Go get his barber and sit his barber on the side. We will fuck Travis Kelsey fade up. <laughs> Everybody in my DM, Travis Kelsey got the new boost. <laughs> Don't start with me early this morning. I waste my damn coffee. <laughs> yeah, you know what's funny is during my interview with uh, uh, Terrence Gangster Williams, he said, Vlad, you got a boosty fade. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I do not have a boosty fade. So said, no, you have a boosty fade. <laughs> That's the first time in my life I ever heard that. Yeah, Travis Kelsey, he, he can't, can't touch this fade. Yeah, I agree. But he said, bruh, uh, I will laugh my ass off at Travis Kelsey celebration. You got to have some black in him. Got to fight for your right. Got to love oh, Travis yeah. Kelsey. Oh, yeah. You, you, heard his, you heard his speech? Yeah. You ever saw him dressed? Yeah, like Travis Kelsey going to a club in Atlanta, man. Travis yeah. Kelsey be fly as fuck, bro. Yep. Hey, Travis hey, Kelsey, man. bro. Top I, of the world right now. I, I like him, bro. I yeah. like I like how he bagged Taylor Swift. He went for it and man, I I just I like dude. Yeah. Put a baby in her. Go on, I, I would have been skeeted. He supposed to been skeeted at Taylor Swift. Pig lip the poke size. 
Meet the meat. He supposed to be and skeeted it up. Yeah, she's 34. It's time. Yeah. What are then you going to wait until you're 50? Then she what? Probably six feet, five, eleven? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's an athlete. <laughs> God damn, that's a that's a, another pro. Five eleven. Five eleven in him. Oh, yeah. that's another a tight end. <laughs> that's another one. Oh, my, oh, bro. Wide receiver. There you bro, go. Bro, that's a bro. Yep. With the Taylor Swift legs, lanky. <laughs> oh man, USC oh. standout. <laughs> well, speaking of football players, the Cam Newton fight. Yeah, I just saw it, man. Yeah, man. You got a hand. That that man wore a Wicked Witch of the West hat that never fell off. <laughs> he fought off six people in the hat, and the witch hat never fell off his head. <laughs> hey, Cam was street nigga. Cam ain't, hey, Cam ain't no punk, boy. Yeah. I mean, I don't even think he was punching back. He was just sort of just throwing him off of him. I don't know. I couldn't really see it. Man. I mean, it was crazy. But from what I understand, though, and someone actually posted a video of this because the two guys actually uh, did an interview about it, and then people started posting compilations afterwards of what they were talking about, that Cam was just very verbally abusive to that team. Okay. Y'all ain't shit. Y'all ain't nothing without me. You know, y'all fuck ups, rah, 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 just over and over and over again until somebody just snapped. And then I think the dude that got into a fight with him, his brother saw what happened, so his brother tried to jump in to help him. And, you know what I'm saying? But I think that's why Cam hasn't said anything. Because I think Cam understands that he had, he had a role in all this happening. People don't just jump on someone like a Cam Newton for no reason. Right. Because they know what they're going to be in for. So right. someone just reached a breaking point. Right. But it was a crazy-ass fight. Yeah. Let's switch gears a little bit. Kodak Black. Yeah. You dropped your name in 11 a.m. Malibu Freestyle. Yeah. He said, uh, and N-Word's been scared of me from ever since I remember. That's what the streets tell me. I didn't care about that shit, though. I'm trying to get a rich hoe. Who Boosie think he is? Who you N-Word's think you be in? Yeah, I heard him. When you heard that, what'd you think? Uh, what I say, it really, really, really affected him, bro. I mean, he not letting it go. What I said about... Takashi really, thing? Yeah. And he seemed like since then he's been down here. But, so I think that that real I think he regret what he did with Takashi. And you know, I ain't I ain't I ain't gonna go hard on nobody in no situation like that because I've been there before. But I just feel like what I said it really got on his skin. Every interview he's been doing, he's been, you know, I mean, I just feel like I, I really got on his skin, bro. I mean. That's basically it, man. We gotta, I mean, I think it'll be better if, see what we don't like to do is own up to our mistakes bro, because of our pride. I used to be like that when I was young, you know. I ain't used to ain't own up to my mistakes even when I went to, I used to be. But I just, we gotta start owning up to my mistakes and be like, man, I feel I made a bad decision, you know. And, that make when you when you speak your truth, that make people forget about a lot of a lot of shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I just think with that situation, you know, I kind of I kind of got under his skin, and and, and I think he I, I think he had a point where he he regret what he did. Well, you responded on Twitter. You said, "Who Boosie think he is? Someone you will never be." Facts. You gotta. You must still be mad about what I said because you keep bringing my name up, Kodak Black. You gotta blame yourself. You gave your career a black eye. I didn't do it. You did it. You're supposed to be the focus on getting back out here with your family and getting help. I wish you the best and I wish you freedom. Yeah. You know, it's just. Yeah. I want Kodak free, man. Stay out of jail, bro. I mean. Right. BG. You guys actually finally got to meet face to face yeah. for the first time in how many years? Uh, since since November 9th, 2009. Damn. That is 15 years, 14 and a half years. Yeah. How did it feel? I shed a tear, bro. Really? You cried? Yeah. Right, because when you were getting out, he was going in. Right? Right around the same time? Nah, I went out. When I went in, he went in like eight months later. Aha, okay. 
Well, the whole thing about his case came up. And I forgot who put it out there first. It was either 1090 Jake or WAC 100, but there was the whole thing about the gun charge, right? So yeah. from what I understand, when he got pulled over with a gun, he had a fall guy yeah. who said, that's my gun. Right. And where the, the criticism came from was, I guess, that the statement that the fall guy made when he came to the grand jury, BG basically said the exact same thing that the fall guy already stated right. on the that's, record. That's how and, it and they goes. tried to basically paint it as him snitching. That's how it goes. It's all orchestrated for who? Him to take the charge. Right. This happens a million times in the neighborhood every day. Mm -hmm. Every day. When, when somebody gets in the car every day, hey, look, when, it, when it, something happens, it goes to you. You have no criminal record. That's how it goes. Would you do a, a grand jury statement if someone took a gun charge for you? Yeah. You would have no problems doing it? No, I'm not testifying against nobody to put them in in prison. They've already testified against They've themselves. They've already testified against themselves. Right. When we got in this car, we already know who going to take this lick. Go listen to all the old rap songs what people talking about. My legit, he going he gonna to take this lick. In gangs, you get recruited to take licks. Yeah. You get put in the car to take licks. So we got to tell this DA who this for, that's the plan. Right. We're not going against what he said. We're not saying something different from what he says. Right. Everybody is agreeing that this is his gun. Yes. And it might actually be his gun. Even if it's fucking not. Yeah. This is a neighborhood thing since, the, since, since Al Capone. Hmm. Since the 40s. <laughs> Li that was you could call the dudes Little Lucky. <laughs> Little Bobby. The, the younger kids who don't have a record. It's not he's saying that. He's saying that I ain't do nothing. Who the, and you saying that. No. Oh, come on. Man. After this came out, BG got a chain with a rat in a coffin. <laughs> <laughs> And then he did a song with Finesse two times where he said, uh, my N-word Boosie went home, my dog was steady blowing, my N-word Wheezy steady touring, but he a bitch and a showing. You heard that? Yeah, I did. Did you and BG talk about that? Nah. Nah? But he didn't shout you out. If we did, I wouldn't tell you. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. But from what I understand, him and Wayne actually talked it out afterwards. Yeah, they talked it out. Yeah. But, and I'm going to say this, and I'm, I'm going to stay saying this, because Finesse two times, I remember did an Instagram post, they said uh, they need to stop killing these rappers and start killing these bloggers. Because Finesse two times has paperwork on him as well. So, BG did a song with someone while wearing a, a rat in a coffin who cooperated. Would you do a song with someone cooperated? Sometimes you don't know who cooperates. You know <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, 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 I ain't fucking with that. You know, I didn't, I didn't did songs with people like local dudes, and they then came back and be like, "Boosie, he a, he a snitch," you know. But it, it was, it was too late, you it's know. Late. But <laughs> known rats, I'm not fucking with them. I, I okay. Mean, I, that's not. That's why I'm not what I believe. Right. I just got a call the other day. I did a post for somebody. And dude, like, man, Boosie, just a post, you know, just a business post. Like, yeah. he, got a, he got a brand or whatever, and I did a post for him. And dude's all under my shit right now. Just, man, I was just doing a post. I didn't, like, man, I, that's my first time seeing Yeah. Like, well, that started the whole thing with you and WAC 100. Yeah. Uh, WAC 100 called BG a snitch. Uh, you call WAC 100 a clown. Uh, I think in an interview, I think it was on Cam, Cam Capone, 
uh, when you talk about whack 100, say, uh, you say you're like that, but I'm like that. Yeah. Now, I know whack. Me and whack are cool again. We were beefing for like 10 years. We didn't talk for 10 years. We were beefy, but we just didn't talk for 10 years over some shit that happened 10 years ago. So me and whack are on good terms again. Uh, and whack did an interview on No Jump where he basically says that he respects you. You know what I mean? He'd been around you, said that you've done him some favors and stuff like that in terms of like some music shit. And uh, he don't have a problem with you. He's just putting out what he felt, you know, was accurate. What's your take on WAC 100? I ain't really got no take on him. I, you know, nigga tell me they gonna do me something when they see me, so I DM'd him. You know, it basically, you know. You DM'd him? Yeah. So what'd you say? Uh, that I'm like that, basically. You know, I ain't gonna go into detail, but I just told him, you know, uh, I mean, I just basically told him, man, man. I don't really want to talk about it on here, but ain't nobody, ain't nobody, ain't nobody, bro, like, I basically told him, man, man. I ain't, bro, like, I ain't, these other dudes who you, bro, like, you know, he was talking crazy, bro. When I woke up, when I saw that shit, I was just like, you know, man, we gonna, we gonna lay you down, bro, like, real shit, bro. My little niggas ain't going for nobody putting their hands on their balls, man. Well, I, I can tell you that Wack, he, he does troll a lot, but he is a reasonable person. He's not crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I've had problems with Wack where he talked crazy to me on the phone. That's actually where our problem started. Ten years ago, there was a situation over a Ray J video shoot where he got upset over some photos I posted over the shoot. And he called me and he started talking crazy. Yeah, to me, me and Matt Wack done had arguments now before yeah. this. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I we said, didn't have arguments before this yeah. about the Kodak shit. Yeah. Then we were straight again. But right. the but the motherfucker, man. Right. And man. Well, you know, listen, I, man. I may have a problem with Wack in the future. You don't know. Like Wack is man, like that. But but bro, what I'm saying is, is that ultimately you could talk it out with him, and if it's about some business, he's willing to put it all aside and get, get to business. That's all I'm saying. And I don't want to see anything happen between any of y'all. Because at this point, I know everybody. You know what I'm saying? So, it is what it is. I mean, I don't want, hey, bro, like, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't want no house. I mean, I, yeah. I, I, live a, I live a peaceful life, man. Yeah. You know, I ain't looking for no house. <laughs> but like, yeah. I, I ain't ducking no smoke, bro. You know, I ain't, I ain't ducking no smoke. And I ain't going to let nobody harm me, bro. Right. I got it. Nor know. should anybody. Yeah. You know, me neither. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk about Diddy for a second. So, from what I understand, whenever you perform the Wipe Me Down remix, when it's time for the Just Left New York City hooked up with P. Diddy, that is no longer wrapped in your, in your performances. Nah, I skipped that. You one. skipped that part. Because <laughs> hooking up with P. Diddy has taken on a whole different meaning these days. Most recently, a man has filed a lawsuit against P. Diddy, claiming all types of insane shit. <laughs> and, and what's crazy now is that uh, Meek Mill and Usher are now somehow involved in this lawsuit, uh, allegedly over the, the freak offs or, or whatever else. Now, now, I can tell you, Meek Mill got to hold that a little bit because of the photo that he took with Diddy. Do you know the photo yeah, that I'm talking they, about? When they dressed like. Yeah. <laughs> I know photo. it, Vlad. I don't want to see it, Vlad. <laughs> I don't want to fucking see it. I fuck with me. I don't want to see it. <laughs> I, I don't really know what uh, why Meek would put that on, man. I mean, unless they just came. No, I, you can't even say they came and were just by chance. It's not like, oh, okay, we're both wearing the new Louis shit. Okay. This could happen. No. That's an outfit that they decided to wear together. <laughs> you ain't shit. Man. I know I ain't shit. <laughs> Did I ever tell you my puffy story? I actually tell us on Drink Champs. No, me is not fucking puff. No, it's okay. a no, nigga. I'm going against it. I don't give a fuck. Uh, let me tell you my let me tell you my puffy it. story real quick. So so this was years. This was maybe this was before Vlad TV. This was maybe around 2006, and. Uh, 
I was rocking with this company called Style and Dean, and they had these really dope throwback um, jackets, like like Negro League teams. Don't tell me he came at you, bro. But what, bro? Just just hear me out. Okay. Hear me oh out. My God. All right. So so you finna go viral. I'm <laughs> <you. laughs> what happened was, I got this jacket uh, for a team. It was a Negro League team called the Brown Bombers. Right. It was brown and it had like this kind of like. Uh, you know, football player dude on the back and had like the matching beanie. It was, it was fly, right? Now, I, I think I was like the only one that really had it at the time because I was working directly with the company. So I go out to a club and I'm wearing the shit, right? So this dude walks up to me and goes, hey, man, um, I, I work with Diddy. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, man, um, he really likes uh, the jacket that you're wearing. Um, he's wondering if you would uh, sell it to him. And I'm like, man, get, get the fuck out of here. I'm not taking off my goddamn jacket to sell to Puffy. Like, what, what type of weird-ass request is that? I said, I'm good, man. No, thank you. I don't get it, man. He tried to buy my jacket off me. What you I, saying? So he can see your body? That what you No, said? no, no. Look, he liked the jacket. So, you just want to so buy what's it. freaky about that? Because you're going, freaky. you're going now. There's nothing freaky about it. It's just weird. It's just weird. Have you ever seen a man out in public and, and buy his clothes off of him? Have you ever seen some dude wearing a nice jacket and say, hey, man, let me buy that off you? I'm just saying, Puffy, a different kind of motherfucker. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> to yeah, have the gall it's, it's, it's to do getting some shit bad. Like that. It's getting bad, bro. Yeah. I would have been filed for bankruptcy. No, I think he saw his money. I would, I would, bro. I put yeah. paid up too quick, man. He paid that bitch in thirty-five minutes. <laughs> he paid up too quick. Yeah. Well, you know, Columbus Short, uh, the actor, he actually did an interview recently. He paid up too quick, bro. That's the whole thing, bro. I would have cast it. Yeah, I would have made a wait. You rate me? I would have. I would have. We smoked crack together. I would have turned into a crackhead. <laughs> We did LSD together. The bitch raped me. Uh. I woke up, something was in my, in my fucking ear. Yeah. I say she had a motherfucking... Man, I would have flipped it on that bitch. Oh, no. I would have say the bitch had a, a, some, a voodoo lady over me. Oh, I would have flipped it. I would have caught the stand. Hey, your honor, she lying on me. Yeah. We crackhead. <laughs> together. <laughs> man, ain't no way I would have paid the bitch in 35 minutes, man. Well, he didn't pay her that much. What he paid him? It doesn't matter, man. I, I, I heard. He I heard, paid too quick. I, I heard the amount is. I heard from someone. I'm not gonna say who. But I heard from someone, and they told me what the amount was, and it's not as much as people think it is. He paid too quick. But he did pay very quickly. He paid too quick. Now oh, they got ghosts coming from motherfucking. Oh yeah, it, it's bad. Bro, like, it's, it's man, bad. bro. Well, you know, uh, Columbus Short, the actor, he did an interview and he was talking about how. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, he said that. He did it, called him. Called him and said, hey, man, uh, I want to meet with you. Uh, I'm, I'm staying at the Beverly Hills Hotel. You know, it was like 2 a.m. He's like, yeah, man, could go, you know, uh, come by my room. He goes, oh, oh, who over there? Oh, it's just me. Now, to me, this doesn't seem all that weird. Yes, it is. I mean, have they done cocaine together before? Have they smoked a blunt before? If Jay-Z calls me and said, hey, Vlad, I want to have a meeting with you. Come to my hotel room at 2 a.m. and I'm here by myself, I would absolutely go to that hotel room. What's Jay going to do to me? Rape me? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, hold me down? I mean, I like what? And obviously it's weird because, obviously because he probably didn't hear something. Okay, so you hear something. So what? I mean, this is a mogul. I know that everyone's trying to flip things. You know, I mean, look, now if some real shit that happened, I understand, you know, Kid Cudi's car got blown up and you know, the, the whole male, you know, Cassie said that they had freak offs where dudes with big dicks would fuck her and while well, Puffy watched, you know, yeah, okay, that shit probably happened. But I'm just saying, if, if a major businessman called me and said he wants to have a meeting with me in his hotel room, in the middle of the night, I wouldn't see a problem with that. I would absolutely go to that meeting. Me too, probably. Me too. Yeah. Because I'm thinking ain't nobody going to try me like that. Yeah, exactly. If I'm not gay. Yeah. 
Now, if I was a woman, I understand. Now, if I didn't hear something about who calling me, that's okay. a whole different thing. Okay, so so Columbus Short heard something. Okay, that's Even, probably why he was like, "Buy your spot myself." Whatever, man. But what, but what are they going to do? My thing is like, unless you show up and there's five motherfuckers in there, and he's telling me he's by himself, oh, let's just go down me in the lobby there. You know, I don't feel comfortable. With it. But in general, the problem is that right now it's a pile on, right? Yeah. Everyone yeah. gonna come with a story. I'm going to come talking about how Puffy wanted to buy my jacket, you know, and people go take it a certain type of way. You know, I don't think there's any sexual, I don't think there's anything sexual about it. I just think he liked my jacket. And he was just basically didn't have enough respect for me to actually ask me where I got my jacket. Right. Which right. I would have just told him. I mean, Puff was a cool dude when I met him. Right? Yeah, I've never had any problems with Puff. I, I remember actually, I mean, I, I remember when those pictures of Cassie came out, remember those naked pictures with the, the pierced nipples and everything else like that? We had posted the picture and it was going viral. Wonderful. Yes. And I remember my man Cassie, Sean. Cassie, you are, you are everything. My man Sean Prez called me because he Puffy was calling everyone to get it taken down. Right? And I remember Puff called me. Well, no, he didn't call me. He called Sean, who, knew, who he knew, knew, knew me. And he was like, hey, Puffy, want to talk to you? And I'm like, I, I'm not taking this phone call. <laughs> he said, you don't want to talk to Puff? I said, I already know what this phone call is about. I'm not going to sit here and listen to a man yell at me. Because, you know, I, I'm going to start yelling at him back. And it's going to turn into a fucking thing. I so, saw on the news, I mean, on the social media today, a girl say Puff shot in the face. Well, it was, it was, the, sh it was the shine. Remember I the just saw that before we got no, 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 in this no, no, interview. No. Okay, so, so that story, remember the reason why shine went to prison was there was a shooting that happened in New York. Jennifer Lopez was there. Yeah. yeah you remember that, it. right? Yeah. So an argument ensued in a nightclub where a bunch of dudes basically got into an altercation with Puffy and his crew. And he was like, oh, no, motherfucker, we got money too. And they threw a bunch of money in his face. And from what the story goes was that Shine pulled out a gun and shot. And a girl got shot in the face and someone else got shot. You know, they, they jumped in a fucking car with Jennifer Lopez and Puffy tried to get the, the limo driver to take the gun charge and everything else like that. But now the girl who got shot, who got paid off a whole bunch of money, is now saying that Puffy was the actual shooter, not shot. You think her money gone? Yeah, I think her money ran out. And, and she's just trying to hit yeah. another lawsuit with Puff. Yeah. It's too late, right? If she already It's too late. And probably she's probably violating an NDA because usually when you have a settlement, yeah. you're not allowed to speak on it. Yeah, it's but she probably money. just doesn't give a shit right now. Yeah, that money's money out, gone. she's broke. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cuz I can't imagine I can't imagine Shine going to prison for 10 years when he wasn't the shooter at all. You and know what I'm saying? saying that he's a civilian now. Well, I mean, now he's like a civilian, a politician, he's yeah, a civilian. Exactly. I mean, Sean just might be a soldier, bro, you know? I don't know, bro. But we don't, we don't know Puff what for, happened. He hated Puff for years because Puff basically got their cases separated. And I think Puff actually may have testified against him. I Something mean, like that. I don't yeah. know, man. I mean, it, I just it was, know. It was a messed up situation. Diddy going through it right now. Yeah, he's definitely going through it. He's Diddy going is definitely through. going through it. If I was Diddy, man, I'd just go out to Bali with Russell Simmons. Just lay low for a couple years, bring his favorite girls out there, bring his new baby out there, and just, you know, bring young Miami out there. You know what yep, I'm saying? Yeah. You know, pee on her every other day and just call, just call it a day, man. <laughs> man have, a whole, have a bunch of his favorite water around, you know? So <laughs> That's the craziest shit, bro. I will never, I mean, I will never pee on her. I, I hate I, how piss smell. I've done it before. You've done it before, babe? Yeah. One of my exes, yeah. She was in it. Oh, I did bro. it once. Oh, my God. Yeah. I've talked about this before. Man, bro, I just hate our piss smell. Yeah, I wasn't into I'm it. From the, <clears throat> I'm from the hood, bro. I hate you used to hate the smell of pissy, bitch. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, even in she, elementary she, school, I know that pissy smell. She asked me to do it, right? And you wet her ass up. Yeah, in the shower. In the shower. You trying to, you trying to make, make it, make it. <laughs> I didn't want to fuck my bed up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Man, I, bro, I can't. 
I yeah. just can't stand that smell, man. And she kind of explained. I'm like, I'm like, so after we were done, I'm like, can you explain to me why why you wanted me to do this? And she goes, well, it's like a closeness thing because we know we're so close that even like peeing is not like taboo, you know, kind of just, it's like kind of like rocking down barriers. And I'm like, all right, well, I ain't doing this shit again. I'm good. <laughs> we're done. Like, you know, we weren't done. No, we still stayed together. But I'm just saying like, it, it was something she asked me to do. I did it. It wasn't my thing though, but. Clearly, it's Young Miami's thing, so. French Montana did an interview recently where he said that uh, Nipsey Hussle's murder actually stopped him from buying up his own block. I didn't see that. Yeah, I think it was a breakfast club, maybe. Did you ever think about that? Buying up your own block? No. No interest. Why do you think people do that? I don't know. I don't know every person in, in they, in they, in they, uh, in their mind, but uh, I mean, it depends on what kind of person you is and what you've done in that community. You know what I'm saying? Certain niggas who ain't done nothing, uh, you know, put nobody down. I can buy your block, man. I mean. Even if it might bring envy, like, you know, you might can buy your block. But I mean, when... Nipsey was trying to do it. I mean, not his old block, but he was basically working on his old neighborhood. Right, 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 bro. You know, he was buying up strip malls and stuff like that. Niggas petty now, bro. You buy your own block, nigga, set that shit on fire. Yeah, that's what happened to uh, Javante Davis. Yeah, bro. Like, this shit niggas, before they bust a the gun, they'll flick a light. <laughs> you know, you know, you know what your heart into. You know, well, Mike, Mike Epps did it though. He has a, a show on Netflix about doing it. Yeah, Mike. Yeah, I just left his. I just left his community. Oh yeah, you checked yeah, it out. Yeah, now I got. Some, I ain't getting no more hotels in Indianapolis again. I'm going to stay on Mike Block. Oh yeah, man. I had so much fun with Mike Epps' family, bro. Huh. I felt like they was my family, bro. Like Mike Epps. Is, Mike Epps a real nigga, bro. What'd you think about Mike Epps and Shannon Sharp going at it? Because Mike Epps called him zesty. Yeah. And Shannon Sharp was like, yeah, I'm going to see you, and I'm going to see if you say it to my face. Mike Epps made a video and said, man, I don't really do much fighting these days. I do, pew, pew. I do blank. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to see you at All Star in my neighborhood in Indianapolis. And we're going to do some blank, blank, blank. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, from my point of view, Shannon Sharp got scared. Because before I mean, you know it, they took a picture together working it out. <laughs> I mean, bro, you got to understand, you can't, can't really threaten people on social media, man. Yeah. That shit going to stick in court, bro. You can't, that, that's, a, that's a liable case of self-defense. When you say you're going to hurt somebody or when you see somebody, mm -hmm. you know, that's a, bro. That's a liable case to get, you know, something to happen, you know, so. I was like, man, I hope he don't try that nap town. Like, uh, oh, yeah. No, and I've, I've heard stories about Mike. I don't think anything's going to happen to him in his, in his hometown. No. Oh, no. They, they love him way too much there. No. They're not going to let an outsider come in and do something to it's him. It's not happening. It's not happening. Not in his home city. It's not happening. Bro. Yeah. And I think Shannon figured that out very quickly. It's not happening. They love Mike like Larry Hoover. Mm. <laughs> He's Larry Hoover. Hoover I've never heard. I've <laughs> never heard nobody talk negative in Naptown about Mike. Yeah. And I've been there, going there since 2003. Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah. Me, me and Mike used to talk years and years ago. I was actually trying to hook him up to play Mac Dre. Okay. Movie. Oh, he would have. It would have been perfect, bro. Dancing. Would have been perfect, bro. He would have, bro. He would have killed. Yeah. Mac and Dre. this was like ten years ago, so you know what I'm saying. It, it would have yeah. been perfect, perfect. But you he know. say he gonna do me a part in my twins movie. I'm gonna hold him to it too. Okay. So. Yeah. Well, speaking of comedians, the whole Cat Williams thing happened right after our last interview. Yep. Where he he blacked out on everybody. He dissed Michael Blackson, Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer, Ricky Smiley, Kevin Hart, Diddy, Jonathan Majors, Tyler Perry, Tiffany Haddish, Harvey Weinstein, Ludacris, Earthquake. 
I also claim he turned down $50 million three times not to wear a dress. He reads 3,000 books a day. Uh, he adopted 500 kids, like everything. When you seen Cat Williams go off, what'd you think? These numbers will never be done again. I mean, that was that was some that was some legendary shit, man. Mm -hmm. Like that. At the end of the year, they're gonna be the front thing of the uh, of the paper. You know when yeah. they had an Instagram flashback? Yeah. Cat Williams. Yeah. That shit. That shit was. That was shit was, else. bro. But Cat, my boy, man, Cat. Well, yeah, I mean, we talked. It's funny because right when that happened, that's when our clip with me and you yeah. dropped about how he just threw you like fifteen thousand dollars when you got out of jail. Right. And right. I've been hearing these stories. Yeah. Brunel has been talking about it. Uh, Beanie Siegel talked about it in our interview. He gave Beanie Siegel a, a Lambo. Just to have. Here you go. And he's the best, or one of the best stand-up comedians. Yeah, he's up there. I've ever seen. He's up there. Ever seen. Yeah. He, he, he's definitely up there, man. Uh, and, you know, listen, all that did was help his tour. Now his tours are packed out even more. Yeah. And he's bringing in all the people that, you know, that are beefing with the people he dissed with. Now he got Monique on his tour. He got Kevin Hart's ex-wife on his tour. He's just like, the, the pettiness level is on 100. <laughs> <laughs> God, cheers. It is definitely chess. <laughs> it is definitely chess. Uh, well, you went to go see The Color Purple with your daughter. Yeah. How old was she? Seven and nine. Seven and nine? Yeah, seven and nine. Got it. Now, you end up walking out over the, the lesbian scene. Right? Yeah, yeah. Now, to be fair, right? Because, you know, me and you always keep it 100. Yeah. The Color Purple is a PG-13 movie. Okay. So your kids are technically too young to be at that movie to begin with. Yeah, I guess, yeah. Right. So there's that. But what made you actually walk out of the movie? Uh... It was just, uh, it was prolonged, like. It wasn't, it wasn't just like the, the last kiss or whatever with them, with uh, Oprah, I mean, with Whippy Goldberg, with them ass ass lips. Mm -hmm. It was, it was a whole motherfucking, it was a whole motherfucking love story. Like it was a, going to the movies, I mean, it was, just, I just felt it was, it was turning into a lesbian love story, what I was looking at, you know? I was just like, man. And then when at the, at the second kiss, uh, my stepdaughter said, ugh. And I looked over there and my other daughter was like this. I'm like, it, cause, I'm, cause, cause I'm already whispering to my boy ear like, man, this shit is, getting, like, this shit is getting gayer by the minute. Hmm. I'm like, what the fuck? Then I'd in the horse and carriage, you know? Like, this shit is looking acceptable if you're looking at it the screen like a woman's supposed to love a woman. So as a parent, I have the right to say, let's go, because I'm raising my daughter to one day love a man. You know what I'm saying? And I have that right as a parent. Everybody's not gonna agree with what I do. Right, but your oldest daughter is gay. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so, so it doesn't matter how you raise them. Sometimes kids are gonna be what they wanna be. Right. But you, don't, you don't have control over that. You can, you can try to have control over it. You can have influence. You can have influence. But you can't have control. You can try to have yes. control. You can have influence. You can influence them. That's just like if somebody wants to play basketball, doesn't want to play basketball, but he's seven feet, and you want him <laughs> to play basketball, you have the right to tell your eight-year-old son, you're going to fucking play basketball. Right. Shout out to LeVar. Because LaVar. a parent. Shout out to LeVar Ball. 
Yeah, because a parent is a parent and a child is a child. If a child comes tell you at eight years old she wants to be gay, you can tell her, shut the fuck up. You don't know what that is. Yet. You don't know what that is. You're going you're gonna to do this. Yeah. That was a, that, that was a parent. That, that, as a parent. If a child tells just the same way, we just take it away from the LBG, but it's the same way. If, if your son says, Daddy, I want to go shoot my teacher. <laughs> yeah. You got the right to say, is you fucking crazy? And it's the same way with, with anything. A child is a child. You raise that child how you want that child to be raised as a parent. Yeah. A, pa a child can't raise a parent. Correct. Or persuade a parent. Yes. That's where the world has fucked up at. <laughs> right. We can't be our child friend. We have to be the parent. Correct. A friend, you go tell her, I want to uh, kiss a girl. Girl, you really want to kiss a girl? Is you, is you really want to kiss? But a parent, tuck your fucking lips in. But, but my you point. You're going to have a husband right, one day. Right, but my point is, is that both those little girls were too young to see this movie anyways. Yeah, but I didn't think, I didn't, you know, because they, because my daughter wanted to see it because she loves, what's the girl name of Mermaid? Oh, uh, Holly She Bailey. was like, Holly Bailey's in the movie, Daddy, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm looking at it, they saying it's a musical. It is a musical. I started, it is, I started it is. watching it and I just was like, I'm not into musical, so I stopped yeah, watching it. Yeah, it, so I'm, you, when I think musical, I'm thinking Nickelodeon. <laughs> but it's got the PG-13. I'm thinking, yeah, it, but, 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 but when I think musical, I'm thinking just... Moana. <laughs> Moana, I'm thinking you might have some... You know, I'm not thinking... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not thinking that, you know. I, hey. I thought a tongue was finna go in somebody's mouth. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was convincing to me. I mean, it was convincing. You would look at that and be like, it's cool. Then, then the actors they had doing it was so convincing. You know, Taraji, she can play this motherfucker, you know. Yeah. And then she's the big shot on there. Yeah. You know? So all the little girls who not the big shots ugly, you know, looking like, you know, who not the big shots, you know, they pussy might get wet from, you know, want to kiss the, the big shot, you know? So you got to write as a parent to say, it's time to go. Was Taraji one of the ones kissing a girl? Yes. Oh, okay, so you haven't seen it. Yeah, Taraji was the, oh. the main... Kisser? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Playboy Cardi. Did you see it. what he was wearing? I saw him. I got... I... In the thong. It's sad, bro. And listen, I, I, I put under the thing, SMH sad. Iggy Azalea posted a picture of herself in a thong, and someone said... I know Iggy. Your baby like, daddy was wearing the same thing. She said, well, who wore it better? <laughs> man, bro, like, man. Oh, my gosh, bro. Oh, my gosh. I don't want to speak for Iggy. I don't want to speak for Iggy, bro. Hey, man. It comes to a point when you got to say, man. Should have stayed with Swaggy P. I've never seen him in a thong. Pause. <laughs> man, bro. It is too bad, bro, man. Yeah. That was just like a. Can you imagine being a. Having did a you child see with someone. Did you see it, man? And suddenly there's a picture of him in a thong. Man, did you see it, man? It was awful. It ain't like he worked at Strokers. <laughs> Maybe he's always made at Strokers. I don't Man, know. Man, <laughs> bro, like, it was, bro. It was, bro. Bro. It was, man. I was like, man, bro, like, you're wrong, bro. More women should have stepped up and, bro, the women are quiet, bro. Yeah. The women are quiet, bro. Yeah. Like I said before, more women should have stood up and said, man, bro. I think Sue can say, uh, told what's called, look, look at your baby daddy. Right. <laughs> Mo women got to stand. She should have went in Mo. You know what? Yeah. You got to call men out their name. You got to make a hashtag for them. Yeah. Skittle booty. <laughs> see through sucker. <laughs> you have to make, you, women have to start 
man, bro, because a man going to think it's cool. Yeah. If a woman ain't saying nothing about it, they thinking it's cool, bro. Man, listen, if all the women out there said, man, we love men and thongs, <laughs> there'd be a, a crowd there'd of be dudes. Thongs there, thongs everywhere. There'd be, be <laughs> the thong thong song will get remixed. <laughs> Cisco would put it back at Cisco would go triple platinum this man, year. Cisco, <laughs> man, Cisco would be, man, Cisco would go diamond in a month. In a month. <laughs> if the women, if all the women, especially the women who 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 people look up to. I love to see a man in a thong. Oh, they all have men thong. The motherfuckers are being JC Penny. Hey, listen, yeah, well. Listen, I, now, now I'm thinking about the Cardi picture with a thong song playing in the background. It's fucking my head right now. <laughs> You got my head messed the up. The women, right now. bro. Y'all gotta do something, man. Y'all, bro. Speaking of women, it seemed like all the the big female rappers are, are beefing right now. Um, Megan versus Nikki was kind of interesting. Yeah. Because when Megan dropped hiss, she said, "These hoes don't be mad at Megan. These hoes mad at Megan's law." Yeah. And Megan's law is the child molester <laughs> registration law. Yeah. I know that shit cut deep with Nikki. Yeah. She came in with that Bigfoot response, which was not it. It cause cause Megan's song went number one. Yeah. Nikki shit was funny too. It, it was a little funny. But you it saw didn't go the picture one. Right that she zoomed in. The Bigfoot. The what the blogs were doing. Nah. Yeah, that shit was crazy, I mean. Well, Nikki went on like a one week tirade where she told Megan to dig up her dead mother. Yeah, I saw that. Think that was too far? Um, I mean, I don't think so. I mean, because a child molester accusation to the, to the man. It's not an accusation, it's a fact. Okay, well, bringing that up, <laughs> bringing that up. Bringing that up, I mean, I mean, I, li I like both of them as a fan of their music. But yeah, I think they're both great rappers. I mean, it's just, I don't like to see them women arguing. I mean, Ice Spice and Lotto are going at it. Yeah, yeah. I saw the fucking truck. Yeah, I the paid. truck got vandalized. I was riding, I said, man, I just saw that fucking truck. I didn't even know what that was. I thought that was a Chuck and Cheese truck. <laughs> But you know, I, I, I'm gonna tell you, like, I, I heard the, the Ice Spice song that you think you're the shit. Yeah. You're not even a fart. Like, that song goes. That's actually my favorite Ice Spice song ever. Like, that beat, the way they kind of switch the beat up, like, the way that drum track comes in, I'm like, oh, okay. You heard the song? Yeah, I heard it. I heard it. I, I thought it was dope, man. But it's just sort of crazy that all the big female rappers are once again, once again, all fighting each other. That's crazy. Lil' Kim and Foxy Brown, That's Nikki crazy. and everyone. What like it, it just keeps it keeps going. Yeah, Nana gonna be the new star. And that is. That is. Nana gonna be the new star. Remember I told y'all that. I hope they don't get the hating on her because <laughs> right. I mean that, that's your really girl, right? with this music, with this music now, especially for the women. You gotta be bad. You ain't bad. But, but that, that was always been the case. Yeah, I, no, I no, was. No, no, that's always been the yeah, case. You Lil' gotta, Kim and Foxy, they were both bad in their yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, come on, Nikki. You, got, you gotta when be bad. she came bad. out, she was bad. Yeah, you gotta be bad, bro. That's If you got the look, it's the look. If you got that look, then you gonna get booked because, yeah. man, bro, it's, bro. And honestly, I, I feel bad for the women because... When you look at the top male rappers, none of them are like sex symbols. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. In the straightest way possible right now, okay, the straightest way possible, Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, Drake, Jay-Z, none of these men are like heartthrobs and you know have their shirt off and are all muscle bound and greased up like 50 cent used to be you know what i'm saying like none of them are selling sex to women the way women are selling sex 
Right. I feel like the same bar is not there for men. Like Kendrick, I feel, is the best, worst dressed rapper ever. <laughs> Kendrick is always wearing something that just makes no goddamn sense to me. Yeah. But a lot of people consider himself, consider him the best rapper out right now. When he drops, think about it. Everything else stops when Kendrick Lamar drops. Right. I agree. What does he have? Like 20 Grammys or some shit? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but none of these dudes got lipo. None of them, you know, got, well, actually Drake got, got lipo, I heard. But, you know, <laughs> but I'm saying that none of them are, have their shirt off and whatever else, whereas all these girls got BBLs, lipo, titties done, yeah. hair, you know, tons of makeup. It, it's, I, I think it's unfair. And they all end up fighting each other. Just is what it is. It is what it is. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I'm not mad at him because as a man, I actually, you know, I wouldn't mind. No, I don't like I'm, I don't mind seeing it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I just say. It's the look. Yeah. You know, Ice it's Spice, the is, that Ice Spice video was, was, was nice to watch. Yeah, man. When Ice Spice, <laughs> bro, Ice Spice bad it, bro. You know, I live. She, you know, I think she's the baddest one out of the bunch because she seems like she's all natural. I mean, all of them bad. I mean, just think of all the ones who Ice Spice. Lotto, Nikki, Megan, I mean, Sweetie. Yeah. Uh, man, I mean, it's a, it's a different flavor to each one. I mean, and it's something that gonna cater to the man I. But there ain't, no, ain't, ain't none of them no bugaboos. No. Ain't none of them no bugs. No. You know, so it's the look. Yeah. NBA young boy, he did an interview and he said he's not really into being a father. He has 11 kids. I know that you and you and the young boy have an understanding not to speak about each other, you know, so I'm not looking for you to bash him or anything else like that. But you have how many kids again? I got eight. You got eight kids. As someone with a similar amount of kids, can you give young boy some advice on fatherhood? Because it's a beautiful thing to be a father. No, I can call him and give him some advice. Oh, you did? I say I can call him. You and could, him. yeah, but not publicly. No, nah, I don't want to give him up. Okay, fair enough. You like having a lot of kids, though. Matter of fact, you you want more kids. Yeah. How many more do you want? Uh, two more. Two more. Yeah, two more little boys. That'll make five boys and five girls. Well, you can you can get boys if you want with in vitro. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try like that. I'm, just, I'm shooting blanks. Right. <laughs> you been shooting blanks recently? Man, I'm shooting fucking blanks. Oh, so you've been trying to make a baby? Um, uh, last year, sometime before my yeah, before my troubles and shit. Okay, I was trying to yeah, but I don't, I'm shooting fucking blanks. I get mad talking about it. <laughs> well, there was word out in the news that you're getting married. Yeah, I can't talk. It's part of my case. Part of the case. Okay, fair enough. How's the case progressing? It's cool. Uh, I go back on on uh. I go back on March seven, I think, and uh. I mean, it's just progression. I think from last time the judge, the judge getting kind of irritated. She ready to get this behind her. Mm. I'm, I am too, man. I'm uh, just, you know, I just. I think, you know, I, I can say I got a judge who don't hate me, man. I always had judges. Yeah, you would who, say you have a good judge this time around. Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't really know her. I don't, but, you know, I mean, uh, I'm doing what I got to do to show show the courts. You know, I'm, I'm perfect in everything I do. Right, you've been speaking to kids. Yeah, man, yeah. just not that. I don't miss curfew, I don't. Yeah, you don't smoke weed. I don't, I pass every yeah. test. I mean, tomorrow I'm, I'm on Twitter, I'm interviewing uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Oh, I interviewed, I interviewed him before. Yeah, I'm, I'm, Good I'm, dude. I'm interviewing him tomorrow on Good Twitter dude. Live about, about gun, gun laws and stuff. I got a call from, Jay called me this morning, said the White House called me. Really? About come and sit on a panel. Oh. About gun uh about gun stuff and you know Man, congrats. Yeah, man. I'ma speak my mind about 
nonviolent felonies should be able to carry, man. I mean, I agree. Man, I'm a I'm a I'm a celebrity, man. I mean, yeah, a man who has charges for marijuana, yeah, should not be allowed to carry. Mm -hmm. Who's from South Baton Rouge? Who's been shot? Yeah, you know, who's never been offered rehab for his drugs? Mm -hmm. Who's never been caught with weight? Yeah. 27 grams, 23 grams, 17. Yeah. And sent to prison for 10 years. Yeah. Come home a, a citizen. Yeah. Pay taxes. I paid taxes the last, bro, a I, lot I voted of the last three, four years. Yes. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna talk to these powerful people and ask and see if they feel my pain. Well, speaking of voting, you voted for Trump or Biden this time around. I didn't vote for either. I, I haven't. I haven't voted. I haven't okay. Voted. Well, what do you think about the Trump sneakers? Oh, they ugly. As Would fuck. you rock them? Nah, they ugly. As nah, fuck. they ugly. As fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Look like Apollo Creed had a bitch on it. Uh, Rocky. <laughs> Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> well, Trump made a statement. He said that he feels his criminal indictments have boosted his appeal to black voters. I would agree. Really? I would agree. Because okay. I didn't hear motherfuckers around me like, man, they trying to fuck over Trump. He ain't do all that shit. I'd be like, <laughs> so you feel he has a point? I feel like he has a point, bro. I, okay. I mean, because I didn't heard it on my own ears. People be like, you know, uh, man, they trying to fuck over Trump just when, it, when, when charges come and shit. But, you know, if we're going to keep it real, man, black people like Trump because the money. Yeah. You know, we, 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 I'm not going to sugarcoat shit just because my skin black. You know, most of the people who, my color, who love Trump feel like he, you know, he, yeah. he gave us money. You know, the economy was better when Trump was president. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. I'm, I'm undecided. You know. I'm, I, mean, I, 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 I mean, voted for Biden last time, but this time I'm kind of undecided. Because, you know... One thing about Trump, he let a lot of black motherfuckers out of jail. <laughs> Little Wayne. And I think that was part Kodak of his. Black. Man, he let <laughs> he let some motherfuckers out of jail, bro. But it might have been chess. You know. It was definitely it, chess. It's chess. You Everything know, Trump but, does is chess. Come on. But uh the reason why, the main reason why, and I done heard this out my own African American people mouth is I'm voting for Trump. Trump gonna pop it off. The exact word. I'm voting for Trump. Trump gonna give me some money, Rudy, you know. <laughs> so I'm gonna keep it real about that. That's what that's what our black people are. We ain't worried about no damn laws and all. We worry about the, the, the money. The, the money. <laughs> well, uh the Griselda series on Netflix. Yeah. You watched it? Yeah. I watched it. It was man. Uh shout out to Sophia Vergara, cause she killed it. She killed it. Woo! I want a picture with Sophie. Oh yeah, me too. Uh, she she getting Emmys for that. Like, bro, Guaranteed. she she Guaranteed. she killed it. And when I saw her, I doubted her because I didn't think she can play she can the it god off. mother because how she looked. She, yeah, she's pretty. She's she kind of she does pretty. comedy. It, I yeah. was like, they wrong. When I was reading it in the magazine on the plane when it was finna come out, I was like, they picked the wrong person for this. But when she no, they did it. When yeah. I said she no, had that fake it. nose and oh yeah, no, she killed it. Oh, uh, she killed it. She, I give her an A plus on that. One. Right. Well, you know, right after that came out, because I've been following the guard mother. Yeah. Well, right after that came out, I interviewed Charles Cosby. Okay. Who was her lover slash right, right. drug business partner? Right. And he what he did. You got to hand it to him, you know, because he was in Cocaine Cowboys, too. Like the whole Cocaine yeah, Cowboys, Yeah, I know, too, I know. I watched you, you, you know a million is, times. Right? Yeah, exactly. I can tell you, Danny, everything he said on the documentary. Right. Can you imagine yourself? Would you, would, would, could you have done what he did if you knew that a female cocaine kingpin was in prison who's twice your age and twice your weight, can you go in there and start fucking her three times a week so she can connect you with, with her business? I would love to. You would have done it. 
I would have done it in the, I would have done it in the blink of eye. I would have done it in the blink of eye. Right, cause I, cause I brought up like, fifty look. to a hundred kilos the first drop. Yeah, that's what, no, you got fifty kilos. And I'm drop. and I'm and I'm and I'm selling quarters and ounces. Right, <laughs> rocks. <laughs> I'm selling. Right, cause he was like kidnapping drug dealers to try to get by. He was really scraping the bottom of the barrel. Yeah, yeah, like, like he, that was that was that was a great movie, man. Well, it's not a movie. It's, it's actually happened. I say a move. Oh, oh was, move. Sorry. Yeah, bad. it was a great movie, man. Oh, yeah. It, I mean, you got to hand it to him. I mean, that's some Oakland shit, too, man. I, I've known so many, yeah. you know, I had so many black friends that had fat white girls at home. There. Oh, that's all you see. Bro, <laughs> you I know, went to Oakland. They living with her. Bro, they got a I, PlayStation. I they all fucking Oakland, girls bro. on the side. I went like, to Oakland. <laughs> and... Over the years of going to Oakland for, I say, 20 years, man, I mean, Oakland niggas, hey, like, getting money off a bitch is a real lifestyle. It's man. Oakland. It's, it, well, I mean, if you when think I about say it, a yeah. real lifestyle. It, it bro. really, the pimp shit is really deep. Remember the movie The Mac? You know where that was filmed? Oakland? That's right. I ain't know the that. The first pimp movie was filmed in Oakland. Man, Oakland is, bro, like, man, bro, like, <laughs> I don't even want to speak on I don't even want to make Oakland hot. <laughs> well, well, speaking of uh, TV. They living like that. Bro. Yeah. Well, speaking of TV series, I remember you made a post that uh, you had a crush on the, on the hoe in New Jack City. Oh, yes, I loved her. With the short hair? Yeah. Bob. The, yeah, I used to always beat my meat off her when I was little. Oh, you said? Jack after? Yeah. 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 New Jack City, I felt, I'm going to say that's the best gangster movie of that era. New Jack City was up there. I just watched it again. You forgot how good it was. That was Wesley in his prime. It was good. It was the introduction of Ice-T as an actor. Yeah, it was good. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just the way, the, the way, I'm going to say it's better than Menace. They I'm right a, there. They right there. I, I'm gonna say it's better than Menace. Menace was great, and Menace had an incredible opening scene and stuff like that. But like, but this was on another level. When I mean, think about the budget, like how they took over that whole building, and you know, I mean, the, the actors. Like, Menace didn't have a Wesley Snipes caliber actor in it. No. See what I I'm saying? I would agree to that. See what I'm saying? Had great actors, and shout out to the Hughes brothers. I interviewed them. Yeah. But Wesley was a superstar. Yeah. Menace didn't have superstars like that. He had, had very good actors. Yeah. But not a superstar like a Wesley. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying, man. Great series. Um, before I let you go, any updates on the whole Young Blue situation? Uh, nah, man. I mean, I just served him uh, in Louisiana now. So I filed on him in Louisiana. More lawsuits? Yeah. Yeah. I filed on them in Louisiana, still filed on Empire in Tennessee. Uh, I don't know, bro. I just, I just wish they would have gave me my money because I, I kind of regret going back and forth with them, bro, because nobody makes no money when the family feuds, bro. Like, you know, I mean. I agree. He's been very, I mean, very quiet yeah, <laughs> for, he, for a he, while now. Bro, he, he just vanished off Instagram, right. bro. And I feel I had something to do with that, bro. And I kind of regret all that shit, you know. You know, I'm looking at Friday. I'm like, man, he got blue spot. I'm looking like, damn. Huh. Yeah, you, you can kind of say that. I was looking like, damn, that. I mean, like, I wish they just. He would have been respected so much more if he just would have said, man. Just work pay, it out. Pay, let's work it out. Pay boost his money. Yeah. You know, cause he, he he posted something the other day about a bike, and I went down the comments, and eighty percent of the comments was saying pay boost. Yeah, I was like, damn, bro, like, I was like, damn, I was feeling more for him. Man, <laughs> I was feeling more for him than them holding me all the damn money, man. I was just like. 
Man, we shouldn't even took that shit that far, but you know, a man got to stand up for his family and, and his bag, bro. Like, if you ain't no man, you know, I, I had, to, I, but I was like, you know, uh, blew a hell of an artist, man, and that just, that fucked up my CEO status a lot, bro. Like, you know, but, you know, keep on, I'm gonna keep on going. It's just like, I just feel like when it first came out, if uh, he would have did the right thing, not only would his fans, but my fans would have respected. Yeah. We would have respected it more. It, they would have thought about re all, this, all the stuff that we have said and done, it would have got washed to the table. Realness always over capital, yeah. fakeness. Or, 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 or things like that when you own up and, you know, it's just, I don't know, man, but we just gonna, we just gonna fight it out in court, man. I mean, hopefully guys of them will pay me, hopefully them blue, them, blue them will pay me, I mean. Well, that's what the courts are for, man. That's what you know, the courts are for, when man. when things, I, I, I had a, you know, I had to file a lawsuit myself recently and luckily it just got worked out. But, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to put your foot down. Yeah. And people, when, when, people, when. people don't take, you could sit there and argue with people all day long, but at some point that the arguing, there's no more arguing. It's, it's no time more for the arguing, lawyers bro. to get involved. I just it's lost time a, for you to I just file a lawsuit, lawsuit and they got to deal with the repercussions of the lawsuit. Man, now I they got to spend money bro. To, to defend themselves against the lawsuit. So now, now we're both spending money, okay? Yeah, and I told him, I, I say, bro, these people putting us against each other to put you in a deeper hole. Right. He was telling me, man, I'm millions in debt with a lawyer. How both our lawyers say five star, and they saying you two million in there, but I'm only 250. Yeah. I, I, it's, you're it not does, million, it's not you're right. You're not millions in debt in a lawyer. I, I, I know how much lawyers cost. You, unless you're doing a triple murder, <laughs> you're not, you not a million. Man, they in want debt. us to argue, man. They don't <laughs> right. want you to resolve it. Yeah, exactly. So everything you ever make is gonna belong to them. Exactly. They sit right there and let you sign that, knowing, yeah. knowing that you was my artist and everything. Right. You know, and when they come back, guess what they do? They did that. That's what I they were you. arguing on the, in, in the argument. Yes. That I, TQ and Blue did that, that they didn't, they was in the blind. Yeah. When I text guys for months asking him, this is my artist. Mm -hmm. When we gonna take care of the, the business? So yeah, they 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 put us against each other, man. And yep, yep. But it seemed like uh, you and your mom are on good terms again. The yeah, I'm back. All with, hugged I'm, up I'm back with, I'm, after the whole thing with your brother. Yep, yep. And I, uh, you gave all your aunties Rolexes for Christmas. Yeah, that was kind of cool. Yep. I like I to just see gave that. other aunties who didn't come. <laughs> I gave them Rolexes yesterday. Yes. I held them for a minute because yep. they didn't come. So. <laughs> and I just want to say before I let you go, and me, I, me and you actually had a conversation about this, uh, the song type shit, I feel is your best song since Rocket Man. And I've seen it like playlisted now on, on yeah. Spotify, and I feel like this is the first song that's gotten traction for you in a while. Right. So congrats on that. Appreciate it. Great song, man. Keep doing your thing. Until next time, Boosie. Peace. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait. I got a blues album on the way. Okay, let's talk about it. The Boosie Blues. Now, you already had one before. I got one before. This is this part two. No, this is not a part two. It's called The Boosie Blues. Okay. Stay tuned. Let me tell you what else. I got the Twins movie that I'm shooting next month. Okay. Also, am got... Am I going to be in that movie? Yeah, I got you. You got to okay. find a twin. Uh, a twin? Yeah. Uh, okay, I call him Nicolas Cage. Me, me and him. <laughs> we'll be in it together. <laughs> I got another album I'm working on. It's called My Russian Alliance. Okay, am I in that? <laughs> I got a producer from Russia who's been doing a lot of beats. Okay, for me. I got you. And I got the Me and Dad's album. Yeah, we, I've been waiting for we're that. We're shopping that right now. Okay. Uh, me and BG still finishing our album. Oh, yeah, that, that's the one I'm really waiting for. Hopefully, me and Webby going to get in and finish our album. Okay. I just talked to Rich Homie Quan about doing the album. Nice. Last week, other than that, I talked to Plies about doing that. Album. Oh, okay. So, uh, just be on the lookout all year for Boosie. All right, man. When you guys drop all the joint albums, man, we'll do we'll do a little media run. 
And yeah. we'll, we'll get you and everyone you're collaborating with together to talk about it. I'll help promote it. You know, most of the people you mentioned I've interviewed at some point. Shout out to Rich Homie Kwanda, that's my yeah. man. Interviewed Plies before, I interviewed Daz before. Me and BG trying to work something out. I got I to hit him back. Uh, yeah, man, looking forward to it. Damn that's man. what it is. Till next time. Boost.